knuckle boxing. Fighters unleash their primal instincts with nothing but their fists. Bare knuckle fights are an adrenaline-fueled spectacle that demands not only skill, but also exceptional endurance. Fighters navigate a fine balance between technique and brute force. The Trigon is an unpredictable arena that captivates fans around the world. The sheer display of unforgiving human determination in its purest form. Tonight, the Trigon returns to Rock Hill, South Carolina for a full night of beat my beat battle. The heavyweight belt is on the line as DJ Linderman looks to defend his title for the first time. But Rashad, Dave Walker Coulter is determined to leave the Trigon wearing BYB heavyweight gold. It is all over, just like that. Rashad Coulter is 2-0 inside the Trigon. The smallest surface in combat sports has returned to Rock Hill, South Carolina, and the purest form of competition will live here tonight. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg, of course, joined by my powerful partner, the former two-time world champion, the magic man, Paulie Molinaggi. Heavyweights in the Trigon with the title on the line. Doesn't get much better. The big boy's Goldie, and you know what? Like you said, in the Trigon, the smallest surface in combat sports, not a lot of room in there for even regular-sized guys, especially for the big guys. All you can do is fight. All you can do is fight, and that is the plan for both men competing for the belt. It is DJ Linderman who holds it currently, Paulie. He's 10 pounds lighter than he was when he fought Tony Lopez and won the belt. He's reinvigorated. Well, you know what? He's got that momentum. Beating Lopez, beating Burns back to back. You know what? Success can be addicting, Goldie. You know? And for all those people at home, understand that success can be addicting. When you get a taste of success, you want to keep it. And Lindemann has his title. He said, you know what? I want to keep on holding on to this title. I want to keep it. 10 pounds lighter can only help him with his stamina in there. Because the big boys, they get rumbled. They definitely do. And in Rashad Coulter, Daywalker, the opponent tonight, he is facing off against a very athletic, longtime skilled football player who is determined to outbox his opponent more than anything to do whatever it takes to take home the belt. And what, that's the thing we've noticed about Coulter. He's not really the quickest starter. He right. kind of started a little slow in the fights we've seen him. He's not worried about having to get through the storm early on. He kind of sees what you got. You know, a lot of times in the in the, in the the Trigon, we see some guys that are front runners. They start out really fast, and then all of a sudden, when they can't get you out of there, they sort of fade just like that. Well, Coulter is one of those guys. He's durable. He kind of tests you out to see if you are going to be that kind of front runner. And if you are well, man, he's, he's going to take you right out. Coulter's 2-0 here, and you know what? He's ready for this title shot. He definitely is. If it goes rounds, he believes that his pure boxing skills will take over. And as we mentioned, inside the mighty Trigon, about 500 pounds of heavyweight battlers in our main event of the evening, and it is not a big surface at all. No, not at all, man. Smallest surface in combat sports like we've talked about already. And you've got, you know, 60 degree angles in the corner where you, if you get stuck there, three, th th right here, we got this graphic right here. Three equal size 21 by 21 by 21, 360 degree corners. That's what I was talking to you about. And that's why you get the 90% KO rate, Goldie. You know, you get stuck in the corner. There's not a lot of ways to maneuver except to fight your way out of it. And a lot of times, because guys wind up in the corner because they're sort of dazed or rocked, there's not a lot of escape room there. They're usually gone. And that's why you get the 90% KO rate. And that's why I get to 90% of the time say, it's all over. <laughs> yeah. Just like that. Our rules, the ABC rules, there is a significant difference from when DJ Linderman won the belt against Tony Lopez. Tonight, with the new rules, the main event will be six three-minute rounds instead of seven when he captured the belt. Of course, as always, a 10-point must scoring system is in effect. No three knockdown rule. Punching in the clinch is allowed. The referee or doctor can stop the fight. Great to be back in Rock Hill, South Carolina, as we have seven great battles inside the one, the only patented mighty Trigon. Our tale of the tape for our first fight of the night. A light heavyweight confrontation between Cub Hawkins and Trevor Olison. 
Olison, nine years, the elder of Cub Hawkins. He is a significant reach and height advantage. The man, Blackie Chan, against the Savage to get things started inside the Trigon. With the official introductions, here is Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, entering the arena, Trevor Allison. He is the man, Blackie Chan, looking to rebound from his fight in this building back in May against Ryan Jett. And there was a little bit of back and forth during the press conference yesterday between Olison and Cub Hawkins, Paulie. Yeah, yeah, you know, there was, uh, I guess they had their game face on. You know, Olison's a little bit of a character. He goes by the name, the man, Blackie Chan. Yeah. And Cub Hawkins is basically saying, you know, you can't give me those kind of antics when in your last fight, I felt like you quit. I felt like you don't really have that inner fighting spirit inside you. I don't want to see those kind of antics. That's sort of, uh, that was sort of the uh, dilemma, uh, shall we say, between the two. Uh, Allison sort of uh, has a happy-go-lucky way about his uh, demeanor when he's fighting. And uh, Cub Hawkins is a uh, savage. He's all seriousness. He, he is a savage. There's no question about it. For this fight, for Trevor Olison, he said it's very important to not rest in the clinch, to, to be in attack mode. He said, I live, I learn, I roll over, and I try again. Looking for his third victory here at BYB, the man Blackie Chan, Trevor Olison. His opposition, Cub Hawkins. The savage Cub Hawkins. Madison, Wisconsin by way of Chicago. Two wins in a combined time of three minutes and 38 seconds. He says, I'm always calm. I'm always gonna do me. He likes to counter punch. He said, we haven't seen his grit yet, Paulie, because nobody has forced him to go into grit mode. Yeah, he said uh, he has the shortest time in the Trigon for guys with at least two fights. He doesn't intend to go long, but at the same time, he said a piece of him kind of wants it to because he wants to show the fans that there is a lot more to Cub Hawkins than just getting that knockout. He wants to show uh, that skill set that he's got. I got to check that. Uh, I know Cub is close, but Isaiah Quinones had a couple of quick ones as well. Nonetheless, Cub is a savage. There is no doubt about it. Biggest influences include Mighty Mouse, Demetrius Johnson, and the one, the only, Muhammad Ali. He has come, the Savage Hawkins. Set for the official introductions of our first fight of the night. And once again, we get it up to Lupe. From the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center, Rock Hill, South Carolina, we welcome you to the smallest surface in combat sports, the mighty Trigon. This is BYB21, proudly presented to you by Buy Sell Clothing, The Fight Doctors, and GC3. Tonight's bouts are being sanctioned by the South Carolina Athletic Commission. Chairman is Commissioner Edwin M. Estridge. Also joining us, Commissioners Dr. John Lucas, Commissioner Paul Kennemore, Commissioner Dr. Garrick Messer, and Commissioner Coleman Bates. Ladies and gentlemen, we start the action with this bout. Set for five rounds or less in the light heavyweight division. Scoring the action, we have Jason Collins, Barry Lindemann, and Troy Stamey. In charge of the Trigon referee, Wayne Spinola. Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He enters clad in black trunks on the scale. He registered an official 174 and three quarter pounds. Tonight, he enters in his fourth bare knuckle match with a record of two victories against one lone defeat. Fighting out of Melbourne, Arkansas, Trevor, the man Blackie Chan Allison. His opponent in the red corner, 
Wearing gray with black trim, he weighed in at an official 175 and one half pounds. Tonight, he enters the Trigon, an undefeated bare knuckle fighter with a record of 2-0. and Hailing from Madison, Wisconsin, and fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, the Savage Cub Hawkins. Okay, gentlemen, right here. Okay, guys, you know the rules. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Any questions, gentlemen? If you want to now, shake hands. Okay, step back into the corner. I'll get you started in one minute. The man, Blackie yeah, Chan, the savage, Cub Barry. Hawkins. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Okay, gentlemen, come to stretch. Foot on the corner, foot on the corner, foot on the corner, please. Ready? Hey! Here we go! White trunks for Cub Hawkins. The red rat. Trevor Olison in the gray and black trunks. He's got that reach. He's got the length. But Cub has yet to be pushed inside the Trigon, Paulie, and good shots early by the Savage. Yeah, that's the thing about Hawkins, man. When he gets going, his offense going, he gets it going. He picks his spots. You saw the, the action started. Hawkins actually went backwards, but now you got Olison fighting back. We got a little bit of trading going on here in the Trigon. Go Big time. Olison caught in that corner momentarily. Hawkins all offense early. Olison's cut now. He's at the right eye cut already. Cub Hawkins has had two MMA fights since his last battle with the Trigon. I pull go on right on cue. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on over here. Give me your hands. You okay? You want to keep going? Cub Hawkins go. is so Fight. explosive. Yeah, he go. He transitions defense to offense, offense to defense, very, very fluidly. Almost like that Bruce Lee, like water. You know what yep. I mean? The, the fight started. He kind of started got, got on his toes, went went backwards. You know, you he doesn't. He's, you think he's named the savage. He's gonna start quickly, but no, no. He goes back to that counter punching mode, just like he told us. But at the same time, when he sees his opening, he knows how to pounce. Olsen went southpaw for a moment, but in close, it's all Cub Hawkins. Olsen's being overwhelmed here. You know, he tried. He showed some grit early in the fight, but now he's just being overwhelmed. Just past the midway point, round number one. And of course, Hawkins growing no! confidence again. That uppercut's holding hit, yep. what you're allowed to do. Four, five, Dirty six, boxing. Seven, eight. I give Olsen credit though, man. He's getting up, man. He's fighting, trying to get through this. And Hawkins is very, very difficult to deal with. He, he is doing what Cub Hawkins said he would not do, and that is show his warrior spirit once again. But he's being overwhelmed by the Savage, yeah. down for the third time. And yeah, Goldie Hawkins was very critical of Olsen in his first fight, in his last fight. He said he needs to start to quit. Yeah. So I, I think Olsen's showing him that, you know, the others have that fighting spirit. He keeps getting up off the canvas. Not able to have a lot of successes. He's not turning the momentum around, but he's hanging in there. And Hawkins closing the distance on frequent occasion and not allowing the man Blackie Chan to use that length like he is right there. There he went down a little too easily. It is all over just like that. Cub Hawkins is 3 0. Yeah, he kind of beat it out of him, Gold. Yeah, you know, that last one. It was a right hand, sure. I think he even caught him there, but I think, uh, you know, it was, he just had just had too much. Couldn't resist it anymore. Couldn't put up enough resistance anymore. Hawkins looking the savage every time we see him. I tell you, he's very impressive. You know, he was talking to us how he wants uh, the title shots, right? He wants uh, Laurent T. Yep. And uh, who else was, was Laurent T. And uh, well, Sam Liera. Uh, yeah. I think Sam Liera has, uh, has fought for the last time, but we don't know down the road. Okay. Um, but yeah, he did talk about that fight with Smash Nelson. Here's the replays of. Uh, a round that was all Hawkins, but Olison showed a lot of grit and heart, uh, something that Hawkins had criticized him about not having, you know. Olison didn't go down and look for a soft spot on the canvas. He kept trying to get up, kept trying to fight back, but Hawkins was just too good. Sometimes it's not a matter of will, it's also a matter of skill, and Hawkins had too much of both tonight. Talked about the possibility of Robert Cerna. Smash and Cerna collide for the vacant BYB Super Middleweight Championship when we go to Denver in December. But once again, Cub Hawkins
a first round finish. He moves to 3 0. Spends a lot of time in Glendale, Arizona, training with Ezra Elliott and the team. And he's just so powerful and so explosive that he just mows down another opponent and makes it three straight first round wins. Here's Lupe to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center, referee Wayne Spinola waves off this contest with an official time of two minutes, 36 seconds of the opening round, declaring your winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, the Savage Cove Hawkins. Well, give some credit to Trevor Olison, he did get up, he did continue to fight. That was the longest fight of Cub Hawkins' young BYB career. 136, 147, that one, Paul League, 236. He'll visit with Lupe. Cub, another great performance. In our fighter meetings, you elaborated on the fact that your opponent had a very colorful style, a very unique individual. You seem to take that personally. Why was that? Uh, he, he doesn't take every, doesn't look like he takes things serious. And uh, I felt disrespected because I'm someone to take serious. I'm someone to take all the training that you need uh, to, prepare, to prepare for me. And I didn't really feel that from him. So yeah, I took it personal, so. You said, I'm gonna prove he doesn't belong in here with me tonight. Do you think you did that? Uh, I, I look good and uh, he doesn't really look good, so. Um, <laughs> thank you everyone that came came out, that's watching right now, I really appreciate it. I can't do, it, do this without you guys, and uh, so thank you guys. You said also, I wanna be the youngest superstar in BYB. How much closer do you think you got to that being undefeated now as a pro? I'm undefeated, uh, I think I'm the only, only one with all three uh, finishes in the first round. I got the shortest, uh, Try gun time, and I want to keep that up. There's a, a young gun. Uh, he's fighting for a world title in December. Yeah, I think he's like 21. I hope he wins. Um, but if he doesn't, I'm gonna have to be the youngest to, uh, to be a world champ. So I'm rooting for both of us. So congratulations on the win. Back to you guys. Thank you, Lupe. He is talking about obviously Julio Tenori who will fight Mark the Shark Irwin for the belt, the lightweight championship in Denver. And yeah, 236, now he is three wins in a combined time of six minutes and 14 seconds. Yeah, all six minutes and 14 seconds, explosive. I mean, yes. you can't not blink in a Cub Hawkins fight. He's not only becoming one of the more successful guys in BYB, but also one of the most must-see guys that we have on the roster. Really, anytime Cub Hawkins watches a, uh, is fighting, you have to watch. Coming up next, Charlotte, North Carolina zone, John Barnard, untamable John, the Hawaiian who has lived in Charlotte the last two years. He will welcome tragic Trevor Morris to the mighty Trigon. Saturday, December 2nd, the Trigon travels a mile high as BYB Extreme lands in Denver for the very first time. Three titles will be on the line, highlighted by the trilogy between Monica Medina and Patty Juarez. Mark the Shark Irwin defends his BYB lightweight belt against Julio Tenori. Plus, Smash Nelson and Robert Cerna collide for the vacant BYB Super Middleweight Championship. For tickets and information, go to BYBExtreme.com. Rocky Mountain Brawl in December. Tonight, we are back in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and a good start for Cub Hawkins. Another Trevor about to fight, and he's about to make his BYB debut. That is tragic Trevor Morris against untamable John Barnard. The Hawaiian who has that just scrap mentality, Paulie. I think I think both of these guys have that just scrap mentality. I got I got my BYB smock on, by I the way, Goldie. It. All the blood we've been getting, all the suits I've been ruining here, the action pack being at ringside at, at BYB. That'd make me a BYB smock, so I don't keep ruining my jackets. But yeah, I think my tie, I think my tie's in jeopardy tonight. Trevor Allison was bloody already around <laughs> yeah, the first was. fight. You know what? It's blood every fight, Goldie. There is indeed. Trevor Morris, very interesting young man. He is a tattoo artist, and he's got a lot of tattoos, as you'll see in a moment. He did a lot of the artwork on his own body. 
Yeah, yeah. In <laughs> places that I wouldn't have thought you could reach <laughs> yes. if you could tattoo yourself, Goldie. Really an interesting guy, but uh, really oozes that fighting spirit in the fighter meetings. I was really, after the fighter meeting, he's one of those guys I was really curious to see come out and fight tonight. Yeah, I'm excited about it, and obviously, Untamable John with that Hawaiian background, ready to scrap. Spent a lot of time with Max Holloway. In fact, he was kind of a mentor to the former UFC featherweight champion in the striking mode for Max Holloway. And that, and that, that bodes well, because Holloway, yeah. one of the better strikers in the UFC or in MMA all, all, all around. So, you know, for a guy like Barnard to be able to have those kind of, uh, that kind of repertoire, yeah. that kind of, those kind of accolades, so to speak, he's a guy to watch as well. So we got a good little matchup coming up here. We do indeed. Our Hall of Fame matchmaker, Mel Valenzuela, knows how to put a fight together. Our tail of the tape for our second fight in the super lightweight division. Now living in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Hawaiian is 34 years old, three years the elder of tragic Trevor, who will have a two inch height and reach advantage. Scheduled for five three minute rounds, tragic Trevor, untamable John. The Hawaiian looking to remain unbeaten in his bare knuckle career. Making his ring walk, Trevor Morris. Trevor Morris started competing at age 14, said he was bullied when he was younger. Nine amateur MMA titles, undefeated in both 135 and 145 pounds. He's a metal vocalist for No Man's Bid, owner of Tragic Reptiles, and as previously mentioned, a tattoo artist. Yeah, he's got lizards in his house. Yeah. <laughs> Literally reptiles. I wonder if they have tattoos. <laughs> you know what, with him, you, you gotta ask him, because with him you don't know. I'll tell you what, he told us in the fighter meeting that he believes that this is a great matchup, that he and John have a similar style, that John Barnard is a humble guy, and we could be looking at an early fight of the night candidate. Second bare knuckle battle for Trevor Morris, who after a seven year layoff, took one of the top contenders in bare knuckle into the fourth round, making his BYB debut here tonight, born in Holland, Michigan, fighting out of Knoxville, Tennessee. His counterpart, I love you. I love John you, Bernard. John Bernard, Hawaii fighting champion in kickboxing at 135 and 145 pounds. Hawaii fighting champion, MMA at 135 pounds. Tough man, kickboxing, he has done it all. Third fight of 2023 after a 10 year layoff in which he tore his ACL not once, not twice, but three times. Oof. Not an easy injury to come back from Golden. Not at all. Father of three beautiful girls. He has been very good in his bare knuckle career and looked very, very good in his BYB debut in London, England back in June. Untamable John Bernard. Super lightweight matchup. Scheduled for five three-minute rounds. With the official introductions, once again, here is Lupe. We continue with the action inside the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center. This is BYB21, proudly presented to you by Buy So Clothing, The Fight Doctors, and GC3. This contest set for five rounds or less in the super lightweight division. Scoring this bout, Jason Collins, Barry Lindemann, and Troy Stamey. In charge of the action, once the bell rings, referee Sean Woods. 
Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He enters wearing black with red trim on the scale. He registered an official 138 and one half pounds. Tonight, he enters the Trigon with the goal of unleashing absolute mayhem and in search of his first victory with a record of one defeat, filing out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Tragic, Trevor! In the red corner, he enters wearing white with gold trim. He weighed in officially at 140 and one quarter pounds. And tonight, he enters the mighty Trigon, an undefeated bare knuckle fighter with a record of two victories against no losses. Fighting out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and representing Makahu, Hawaii, the untamable John. Gentlemen, you know the rules. I expect a clean fight. I expect you to obey my commands. If you want to shake hands, go do so. Go to your corners. John Bernard, father of three girls. Trevor Morris, father of three boys. They're going to leave it all in the Trigon here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Here we go. Black with the red stripe for Trevor Morris, the blue wraps. Untamable John Bernard in the white and gold trunks. You can see some hand skills on both of these guys. Right? You know, this is the way that their footwork is. And this is the way they line up. Yeah. And, and that's probably why Trevor Morris said this is going to be a very entertaining matchup. Morris looking for some dirty boxing there, Paulie. Yeah, Morris looking to open up. Into a Shots very nicely. So clean Six, with his boxing skills. Seven, eight. You want to continue? Set to me. Nice uppercut that Take really the split the, the guard and shot Morris brought him down. Ready? Okay. The battle continues, knocked down early for Bernard. He's so relaxed too. Yeah, yeah, he uses that lead hand. Oh, there's a head button. Clash of head. Bad clash of head there. And you gotta, that one kind of hurts more when the guy's got a baldy. Yeah, the body shot there by Bernard. Very easy. Tell you, good. No! Shot selection and pants. I tell you, very impressive. And Trevor Morris acknowledged it. He was like, all right, that was a good shot. Yeah, he can't. It is all over. Just like that. The body shot and then the delayed pain. Buckets Trevor Morris. That was impressive, I tell you. Because, because Morris came out to fight. You could see he yes. got his stance, he came out to fight. He was throwing try hurtful intended punches. And Bernard kept it cool, collected. Never threw a hurtful, hurtful shot, but threw those sharp shots that sort of start to make the difference a little bit. And then as they break you down and slow you down, you put some more emphasis on those shots. And then before you knew it, he, had a, he was down on one knee with an uppercut. And then after that, great body shot. Terrific, terrific bo boxing skills shown by Bernard. And he's got the boxing trunks on, so you're not surprised. I lost my vision. He's a fun guy to watch, great personality. And I'll tell you what, he is a spectacular bare knuckle battler. And and you know what? He had a guy who was looking to fight in front of him, but he was just he was just too again, not yeah. a matter of will, but a matter of skill again. And this is what it was in this fight. You know, it was just, you know, Morris came out to fight, came out to rumble, you know, he got in that high guard and wanted to throw big shots. And it never really undid Barnard. He just kept cool, kept collected. He even took a headbutt there, never lost his composure, kept using that lead hand in a very educated fashion. And it was like that body shot. I mean, that was really something sick to watch, that body shot. I think he does it again here. Bam. I mean, you got to adjust. If you're going to give it to me again, I'm going to take it again, said Barnard. And then, then the second one brought Morris down. Good body shot there. He said he never wanted to be a fighter. The fight life chose me. Well, they chose a good one. Yeah. in untamable John Bernard. Very, very impressive punch selection, shot selection. You know, he was cool, collected against the guy who was bringing sort of a storm in front of him, kept his composure, and selected his punches very in a very educated fashion, very, very skilled. Moves to 2-0 and in the Trigon, 3-0 and in his bare-knuckle career to make it official. Once again, here is Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout concludes with an official time of 1 minute 20 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of KO and still undefeated, 
the untamable John Bernard. Great performance once again by John Bernard. Scott Burt, the leader of our Bare Knuckle Hall of Fame, gives him the beautiful medal, and here's Lupe with the winner. John, your opponent, from the very start, he said, I'm here to create mayhem. You knew he was going to come in kind of recklessly. Absolutely. How were you able to use that technical approach against him? So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly uncovering the art of bare knuckle boxing. It's not boxing. It's not MMA. It's not kickboxing. It's something new, and I'm, you know, trying to identify what are the, the key areas that a lot of these boxers or bare knuckle boxers are um, kind of failing at. And so I'm picking up on that and working on those little um, fine details and you know I knew he was going to come out swinging like my first match it's very slow um, predictive and I just knew I just got to move that head and I was you know being very cooperative with my my team I heard exactly what they was telling me to do and I capitalized on those openings that he was showing my team so uh, great now one of those openings was an absolutely brutal shot to the liver when did you know that was there almost immediately well my coach told me to uh, throw it. my brother told me like, hey shoot the body you know don't head hunt you know and that's what i'm normally known for and he said shoot the body you know i try to give my coaches the um the controller you know i'm like the, the tekken player and you know i let my coach you know choose what combinations to throw and he said hit the body so i you know found that opening very nicely and i put it in put it on now, you're an undefeated fighter. You're fighting out of Charlotte, North Carolina. you got a lot of people here supporting you. But you are an island boy at heart, yes, you know, an island that's gone through a lot of difficult times. Is there a message you want to send out to all the people watching you there right now? Yes, um, I want to give a shout-out to Maui for standing strong against all the craziness that's going there, the corruption and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Maui, stand strong. Keep Hold on to your aina. Keep that aina. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. No matter what, stay there. Stick it out, man. You know, times, we, we go through tough times all the time. So, you know, yep, take care. Um, take care of that Ina, hold it on, man, because, you know, I have to leave the island because I couldn't afford it. You're still there, hold on, man, hold on. Congratulations on the big win, back to you guys. A great message to his Ohana, his family in Hawaii, and if one of my favorite fighters of all time is watching his former training partner, a big hello to Yancey Medeiros who trained with John for a long time. I like the way he's so cerebral about his approach. And, and Paulie, that's the way you fought your entire career. Well, you, you know, you, you can't let your emotions get in the way when you're fighting. You, know, you have to sort of stick, you have to have a game plan. You gotta kind of know how to stick to it despite the storm, despite uh, little hiccups that could get in the way. You know, he took, as you saw, he took a headbutt and never came undone. Uh, he had a guy throwing some, a, you know, ill-intended punches, wild, never came undone. Just kept it calm, collected with that straight jab, sharp jab, sh sharp shooting up the middle, would, would, would throw the occasional right hand and then the uppercut between. And a little by little, he started increasing the intensity on the punches. And before you knew it, they were all landing, but they weren't like super, super hard the way Morris was throwing them. But Morris wasn't landing at all. Right. So little by little, you're slowing the guy down. These bare knuckle shots, you don't have to throw them hard. They, they sting, they sting, they sting. Before you know it, he's like, all right, I'm landing more and more clean. I'm gonna put some more emphasis on this uppercut. Split the guard beautifully, got that first knockdown, and then had the presence of mind did not stay to the head. Like he said, his coaches were smart enough to say, hey man, the body's there, this guy's giving you a high guard. You know what, go to the body. Went to the body once, so it stayed open, went to the body again, and that was all she wrote, Goldie. That was it, and another win for John Bernard, 2 and 0 oh in the mighty Trigon. Sweet Caroline playing here in South Carolina. Jimmy Sandlin and Henry Williams Coming up next. Saturday, December 2nd, the Trigon travels a mile high as BYB Extreme lands in Denver for the very first time. Three titles will be on the line, highlighted by the trilogy between Monica Medina and Patty Juarez. Mark the Shark Irwin defends his BYB lightweight belt against Julio Tenori. Plus, Smash Nelson and Robert Cerna collide for the vacant BYB Super Middleweight Championship. For tickets and information, go to BYBExtreme.com. We said it in Biloxi after Monica Medina won the rematch to capture the belt. The only thing better than a rematch is a trilogy. Oh, yeah, got that right, Goldie. And they will fight in the hometown of the former champion, 
Patty Juarez, Martha Shark Irwin, and Julio Tenori. That is going to be spectacular. Now, well, we got fireworks in December. Yes. That's, right. That's what I think we're going to call that. Yeah. Fireworks in December. Fireworks in December it is. And of course, Smash and Robert Cerna coming your way in Denver in December on the 30 year anniversary in Denver of the first UFC. Our tail of the tape for our next fight in the middleweight division. Henry Williams is 29. Jimmy Sandlin from the suburbs of Cincinnati, 28. Everything else is virtually identical. Entering the arena, Jimmy Sandlin. Jimmy Sandlin, 28 years old, said he started training at age 21, but he grew up wrestling. But he did say he always wanted to be a professional athlete, so he started focusing more on his striking, and despite growing up wrestling, now he uh, prefers striking over the grappling. Now, he did tell us he has a lot of goals in life, but he said uh, when you're young, that's when you gotta fight. You can't, you can't go uh, and set your goals to the side when your goals are to be an athlete. You gotta make sure you do those when you're young, and uh, that's why he's focused more and more on, uh, on his athletic career. Here he is at 28 years old, fighting tonight against Henry Williams. His rival, Henry Williams. The Pitbull, Henry Williams. Born and raised in Clearwater, Florida, looking for his first win in the Trigon. BYB 15, he fought Tommy Turner, the Samurai, who is an outstanding fighter. And the Samurai finished him very quickly. Emmanuel De La Torre here at BYB 14, that one was a battle between Williams and De La Torre. It was kind of our runner-up for fighter of the night. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. And uh, this guy knows how to give us entertaining fights. That's what it's all about here at BYB, and that's all what it's all about inside the mighty Trigon. And he took the Tommy Turner fight on just a week's notice, saying, hey, I'm a fighter, I want to fight. So Williams will welcome Jimmy Sandstorm Sandlin to the Trigon here tonight. Jimmy Sandlin, good Ohio boy. Buckeyes with a big win, 08 earlier today. Sandlin has trained with Neil Rowe, who was Rich Franklin's striking coach, the former UFC middleweight champion. With the official introductions, once again, here is Lupe. We continue with the action. This is BYB 21. Proudly presented to you by Buy Sell Clothing, The Fight Doctors, and GC3. This contest set for five rounds or less in the middleweight division. Our judges are Jason Collins, Barry Lindemann, and Troy Staney. In charge of the action at the bell, referee Wayne Spinola. Presenting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He enters wearing black with white and neon green on the scale. He registered an official weight of 156 pounds after an outstanding mixed martial arts career. Tonight, he takes the gloves off and makes his bare knuckle debut inside the Trigon. 
from Westchester, Ohio, Jimmy Sandstorm Sandlin. Across the trigon in the red corner, wearing solid black, he weighed in at an official 155 and one quarter pounds. Tonight, in his fifth bare knuckle match with a record of two victories against two losses, ripping Clearwater, Florida, Henry. The pit bull Williams. Okay, guys, you know the rules. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. You want to now shake hands? Okay, step back at the corner. I'll pull you out a second. Step back. Set for a middleweight matchup. 28-year-old Sandlin, 29-year-old Williams. Okay, gentlemen, come to scratch. Put on the bare knuckle please. debut the for Jimmy Sandlin. Ready? Fight! Here we go! Round number one. Sandlin comes out in the southpaw stance. And then, and then quickly switches as you say that. Yep, and now he's back. He's got a <laughs> lot of that. Muay Thai experience. He's got the Thai shorts working. So it'll be interesting to watch his footwork. A lot of MMA as well, and wrestling, being from the state of Ohio. Henry Williams in the black with the silver trunks. And Williams throwing a lot. But He's not landed anything cleanly of yet. Henry Williams said of that fight that we talked about that was here in Rock Hill against Manuel De La Torre, it was his funnest fight ever, even though he did abandon his game plan. Oh, lands a shot down Sandlin. And they clinch. Stop, stop, stop. Sandlin back up over here. Back up. got one in fight. as Wayne Spadola breaks him. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Mike Goldberg, the magic man, Paulie Malinaji, BYB 21 from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Hey, Sandlin switches very smoothly, very unorthodox. I don't know if it's going to translate into an offense, but even def from a defensive standpoint, it's not easy to hit clean. A little nice jab there by Williams. Williams doing a good job of at least keeping it basic with that jab. Missing most of everything else, but that sharp jab is keeping Sandlin at bay. Sandlin, wrestler, MMA, striking, Muay Thai, boxing. He said, my speed, my movement, and my flow clean back up. will be a key midway point of round number me. one. Look at me. It makes Five. it tricky, uh, at least to hit. You know, Williams not able to really land much else besides the jab. But at the same time, I don't really see Sandlin able to translate a lot of that switching into a good offense. He's not landing much of anything. Good right hand there by, by Williams, as he's finally able to land a power punch as well. Stop. And digging into the body. Yeah, you see a cut there on, on Sandlin. I think Williams is building up off those basics little by little. Little feints there as well. Williams appeared done early in that fight back in December here. And then he weathered that storm and they ended up going the distance. It was an incredible battle. And that's one thing that Sandlin talked about. He knows the toughness of the pit bull Henry Williams, his opponent tonight. See the blood under the right eye of Jimmy Sandlin. Yeah, Sandlin's tough himself. He just, he's just having trouble closing the gap on, on Williams. And it's also mainly with Williams, a very good jab. So Williams is making it complicated to close the gap on him. And then he uses that jab both for defensive purposes to, to keep offsetting Sandlin's offense, as well as for offensive purposes to set up uh, an attack when he wants to close the gap and throw a combination. Oh, there it is for the body. Set up by Four, that jab, Paulie, just five, like you talked about. Six, seven. Yeah, the jab is giving Sandlin fits. Give me your hand. Because it's, it's okay, also preventing him from setting up anything. He's switching back and forth, looking for a way to close the gap. But Williams' jab is really keeping him at bay. Very nice, ah. smooth round for, uh, for Williams. Henry Williams spends lots of time training with Julian Let Me Bang Lane. That's how you fucking work right here. Don't he trains up. hard, keeps a good mindset, and had a good first round. Caught him with the hook there, Paulie, oh, yeah. as they work on the cuts on the face of Sandlin. That's Lane in his corner, right? Yep. That is exactly right. Julian fought Platinum Mike Perry. 
Henry Williams' first two bare knuckle wins came in a combined time of two minutes and 21 seconds. We are set to start round number two. Williams looking for his first win in the Trigon. He's got the black trunks, Sandlin, black with the neon green. You see that lead hand of, of Williams, just real smooth. There's, you know, you see Sandlin trying to close the gap. It's not for a lack of trying on the part of Sandlin. But again, just like I keep saying tonight, it's this thought of the night. It's, 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 it's skill, not will all the time, yeah. you know? There's definitely you need a certain amount of will, but also that skill. And, and Sandlin definitely has the will. He's trying to get in there as much as he can. But that jab has really offset him. And then when he gets in close there, he just got, he got in too close, and he didn't have enough spacing in order to, to, to get any leverage on those punches. Now he's back on the outside, and he's got to deal with the Williams jab again, Goldie. That Williams jab, or that, that Williams jab is good. So is his jab. <laughs> if you don't deal with it, he's going to turn your face into jab. That's right. That's right. But it's, it's long, too. It's long. It's frequent. And it's hard to time. It's hard because he's right off his rhythm. You see, it just kind of just shoots right out at you. Very straight. From the chin to the chin, back to the chin. See that? And again, right there on cue. Over the top of you as well. You know, he even counters with it. Again, sometimes the basics is that kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, yep. you'd be surprised how often that works even at, at a high, high level of fighting. We saw it in our last fight with John Bernard. Absolutely. Williams trying to close the gap, goes no, to the body. One thing about Salem, though, he comes from Muay Thai, so he's not going right. anywhere, you know? Nope. You're not going to get rid of him that easily. You may frustrate him, but you're going to have to keep a consistent base here all through this this fight. And it seems like Williams is doing that thus far, but it doesn't also it doesn't seem like Sandlin is one of those guys who's just going to go away. Sandlin did say that he believes Henry looks like a pure boxer as he scouted his opponent, and he's exactly right. Henry does look like a pure boxer, and his skills continue yep. to evolve. Yeah, and that, an educated left hand mixed with some really sneaky feints, I mean, will just throw you off completely, and that's, you know, that's, a, that's been really the key here tonight for Williams. Obviously, he's been able to land some other punches as well off of it, but he's been able to disassemble Sandlin's offensive attack. You see Sandlin now thinking about that, Jeff. You see he's jumping in and jumping right back out. He's thinking about what's coming back. So now he's, a little bit of hesitation is on the mind of Sandlin. He's still trying, but now all of a sudden, that jab is on his head. It's on his mind. It's literally on his head, too, but I'm saying it's on his mind as well as he's not thinking about it, and uh, it's, it's offsetting his, uh, his offensive attack and his offensive mindset. Sandlin with 13 professional MMA bouts, never stopped by KO or TKO. And you see, the, you know the thing is too, Goldie, they, they say you can jab, jab with a jab or you don't hook with a hooker. So first thing Sandlin should be working on here is jabbing with Williams. Secondly, you can also take away the, the confidence of, of Williams' jab by countering it. You know, maybe come over the top of it with a right hand. But again, you've got to have the, the sense of mind and the, and the calmness seconds. to do it. I don't know that Sandlin boxing skills are there with that. You know, right. he's a Muay Thai guy. I don't know that he has the, 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 the sense of boxing skills to kind of roll the shoulder on the jab and kind of come over the top with the right hand. You do that once or twice, you're going to create a little bit of doubt in Williams' jab. And right now, Williams has no reason to doubt that jab at all. Matter of fact, he's growing confident confidence with it. He's fainting with it. He's changing speeds with it. And Sandlin is just lost. Don't forget to follow us on all forms of social media, Facebook, YouTube, X, and Instagram. BYB Extreme Fighting Series. Coming your way tonight from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Coming your way December 2nd from Denver, Colorado. Shout out to our man, Big Mo. In the UK, doing some boxing this weekend. Lupe doing a spectacular job. But we miss you, Big Mo. We will see you in Denver in December. Round number three, Henry Williams, Jimmy Sandler. Let's see if an adjustment can be made by Jimmy Sandlin. I know he'd like to throw that deep with Chin Tai's foot jab but he can't do it here. <laughs> it would help him, though. It would. It would. And that is a way that you do create distance in Muay Thai. 
Yeah, the range with when it comes when their kicks are there, you know, all of a sudden your range is different. You know, your sense yep. of distance has to be different. But, but Salen coming from Muay Thai is going to have the toughness. He's not going to be one of these guys. We see a lot of guys who come in high flying as soon as they get hit with a couple of punches, they're gone, you know, in the trigon. There's nowhere to hide. Salen, you know, coming from Muay Thai, you know when somebody's background is Muay Thai, you know, they're they're not going to get, uh, they're not going to want to quit after a few shots. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna, they might get frustrated with the lack of being able to match skills, but they're not going to be like no, looking for, oh, I, I don't like the way this feels. Right. Like, they they felt knees to the head. They, the punches ain't bothering them too as much. Take one leg kick and you'll know how tough a Muay Thai yeah, practitioner is. Forward punch only. You understand? Oh, yeah. He just got a warning. I don't know what he got a warning for. Yeah, I didn't get the chance to see that as I was talking too much. Wayne Spinola, except for forward punch only. <laughs> Maybe try to bring a little Muay Thai in there. He might have, indeed, yep. Might have been thinking elbows. Some of that's muscle memory, though. When you, when yeah. you do have guys that have been Muay Thai practitioners, that jab just landed nicely. And again, it's, it's creating a confusion in Sandlin. He doesn't know how to get his head off center while at the same time closing the gap. He gets no, his head off clean. center, but then he, he can't really translate it into smoothly transitioning from there to offense, you know? He's either trying to get his head off center, trying to get out of the way of the jab, or he's trying to attack. And then when he tries to attack, he's getting hit with the jab. Williams looking so composed. Bladed, long, and very effective. And again, you see, Williams, when he does put the offense behind it, he's smooth, he stays composed. But Sandlin's not going anywhere. He had, sometimes he takes it, sometimes he doesn't. But Sandlin's not, Sandlin's certainly frustrated, but he's not looking for a way out of the fight. He's still trying to win the fight. That, must, that winning mentality is still there. He's just, I think he's out of ideas. And again, the jab continues to frustrate him now. He's kind of thinking, he, he, I think he thinks that if he keeps switching stances, he can sort of offset the jab, but that's not worked. The, the way to do it is to try to counter that jab, but you've got to sort of hold your ground and try to counter it. You know, you can't like dip your head and just try to throw any which shot. You've got to actually see the jab and try to uh, try to actually draw it out of your opponent, maybe with a, a touch jab of your own, try to draw his jab out and then come over the top of it with the right hand. You've got to set him up that way. Or, you know, and, and then you do that a couple of times, you know, now you can get him hesitating on it. And you can use your own jab now to start stuff. But right now, he's not able to do that. He keeps trying. I don't think he's going to stop trying. But Williams is staying very, very consistent. A little slip and rip is what he needs. Yeah, exactly. Or as Peter Welch, our good friend from South Boston, would say a little s slip and rip. <laughs> yeah, depending on where you're from. Yep. You say it a little different. Yeah, right? That's right. Ten seconds. Hit him from far away, Goldie. Fa, 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 fa. Respect the bell, gentlemen. <laughs> Boston accent. Ah. Yep. Sandlin showing his heart, but can he figure out how to solve the puzzle, which is the pit bull tonight? that his greatest influences are Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bruce Lee, and Rocky. So maybe Survivor will uh, yeah, the Eye of the, yeah, the, the, the Tiger will ignite the sandstorm here in round number four. Williams is yelling in his corner. I don't know what he's mad about. He's, he's just doing his pit bull, I guess, right? <laughs> he's, he's fighting a perfect fight so far. He really is. One of his favorite fighters, Boots Ennis, 31-0. 28 knockouts, the IBF interim welterweight world champion. Black and green for Sandlin, making his bare knuckle debut. Third fight in the Trigon for Henry Williams, looking for his first BYB win. See, that's the thing, Sandlin, even when he does try to land the shot, he's putting himself so out of position that his balance doesn't allow him to follow up nor to protect himself from the follow up of, of Williams on the counter because Williams does stay balanced even when you attack him. So therefore, he can shoot right back at you. Sandlin, on the other hand, when he's throwing a shot, puts himself a little bit off balance. So even if he does land it, it's, he's not able to follow up. And like I said, I mean, he's not able to defend off of it either because now he's out of position while Williams stays in position so he can attack right back. Pretty much same height, 
Same reach on the tail of the tape, Paulie, but Williams just appears to be much longer, much taller, and obviously much more effective in this fight. Yeah, Williams knows how to use what he's got. Yes, you know, he's got, turning he, it over, yeah, right? He's got his he's got his uh, his height and his reach, whatever it is there. And then, yes, it may be similar, but he stands up high. He uses those long, straight shots. No! And a body shot knocked down. Four, five, six. His handling is tough. Seven. Hey, yeah, Sandlin got up right away. Like, yeah, all right, we'll just keep going. You know? and like I said, I mean, I could tell from the demeanor of him that he, he's not going to be one of these guys that's going to go anywhere. He's, yeah, he's here for the long haul. He's going to keep trying. It's just the, the frustration builds up here. Again, he switches stances, but again, if you really look at it, Goldie, he's still constantly in, right in front of Williams, and you've got to sort of figure out a way to attack on an angle, and he's not doing that. Even if he switches stances, he's still right in front. So it's not really doing a lot of, making a lot of difference, that whole switch in stances, as it's not making the jab of Williams ineffective either way. Williams figures out a way to use it effectively both ways. And he's controlling the movement as well of Jimmy Sandlin. Yeah. You always talk about cutting off the ring. The trigon isn't very big, but Henry Williams is cutting off the trigon, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely he is. And also, when you're able to control with your lead hand the way he is, it doesn't affect your stamina, really, you know, because you, can, you end up controlling the pace of the fight, you know? And, uh, you know, Williams looks very, very comfortable here because his lead hand has just been dictating the pace of the fight, and, and, and Sandlin hasn't really been able to, uh, you know, change anything up with that. Snapped the head back a moment ago again with another jab. Under 30 seconds on the clock, round number four. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. See, he's not able to follow up because right. he go, he's off balance, you see, and that's the thing. Look what Williams is. Williams is balanced and positioned, and he's the one who's on the front foot back on that jab. Positioning is everything, Goldie. It really is. And it, it's so enjoyable, Paulie, to watch the evolution of these battles in the Trigon, and Henry Williams is a perfect example tonight. Yeah, he really is, and and, and, and he's, this is boxing 101. And look at it, gets off to the side, slips off to the side, and counters with a body shot. See it from the, the different angle, you see right there. Gets his head offline with his own right hand, so he slips Sandlin's right hand by getting his head Ladies offline. Ladies and gentlemen, here back with the left hook at the, the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center, this is the fifth and final round. Also, you understand that slip, getting his head off the center, he kept his balance. That's why he's able to get his head off center and then throw a shot. Sandlin gets his head off center sometimes when he throws a, sh a single shot here and there. Then he can't throw a, sh a shot from that head off center because his positioning is totally constant. His balance is totally constant. So he's not able to get his head off center while staying balanced. And again, that's not, I mean, it is a four, but he, again, this guy doesn't come from boxing. He comes from other stuff. And so your, your movement is a little bit different when, in what he does. Certainly, he comes, he's a born fighter because he, he's totally comfortable despite the fact that he's behind in the fight. Getting hit is not bothering him. He's still trying to win. Henry Williams, quote, I needed to use my jab and get inside. In referring to the fight against Manuel De La Torre, he is definitely utilizing his jab to perfection. Here against Jimmy Sandlin, fifth and final round. That's a push, not a knockdown. Black trunks for Henry Williams. Black with the neon green for Jimmy Sandlin. You see Williams just has a, a good sense of distance as well. Takes those half step back, steps back when, when Sandlin attacks and makes Sandlin come up just short on that offense a few seconds ago. But when your steps aren't too big, when you slip, what happens? You can come right back with your own counters. Right. See, they're like right there. Takes that half step back on the slip and shoots back with a jab counter. And Sandlin, it seems like, really has to open his stance and lunge forward even to try to land a punch on Henry Williams. Yes. And that's because, you know, it's the footwork. You know, it, the, the footwork, his footwork comes from Muay Thai where you use yep. the kick. So, you know, kickboxers, Muay Thai guys, you know, when they, when you got to watch for kicks, you're stepping in a different way. You're closing the gap in a different way. And if you don't transition that footwork into pure boxing footwork, when you're in this kind of fight, it's going to slow your feet down. Nice jab there again from Williams. Mastering the sense of distance here in the fight. 90 seconds remain in this middleweight matchup. Undoubtedly, Sandlin needs a definitive knockout yeah, if he is, is going to have his arm raised. Yeah, Sandlin needs a, a, a 
a grand slam here, essentially, yep. you know? Well, Williams, I mean, Williams, you gotta, you gotta praise his game plan, his discipline, his sense of discipline in the fight, his ex sense of execution, and his corner as well for, you know, continuing to guide the ship throughout the way and keeping him cool and composed against a guy who was sturdy, stubborn, and wouldn't quit in Sandlin, you know? Because guys like this can sometimes make you come undone despite the fact that you're doing well. And so, good job for uh, uh, Williams' corner as well to keep Williams focused and on the game plan and not breaking. Because those guys like Sandstorm, they just won't go away. Yeah, yeah, and they can end up sort of frustrating you, even if you're winning, and and, and something we've seen guys at times come undone, even if they're winning the fight, because, they, because the guy won't leave them alone. You can tell that Henry Williams learned a lot from his fight back in December here in Rock Hill. That runner-up for Fighter of the Night, Tommy Turner's fight was on short notice, but this is the best Henry Williams has looked, and he's 25 seconds away from his first BYB win. Body shot Here we go, the ready? Way. Right. Yeah, it really could have. It was a slip on the way down. Ten and a seconds. shot to the rib cage again from Henry Williams. The pit bull nearly perfect in this five round matchup hey. here tonight. There you go. He picks the shot up. Yeah. Have a look at the slip, Goldie. He might have been on the way down before the body shot, like you said. Yeah, he was kind of it's very close, but I think he's getting, he's, he saw he's going down right there, and then the body shot kind of comes right behind it. So a good body shot, but I, he was already on the way down before the shot. It's almost a good eye by the ref there. It's cauliflower is cut in there somewhere. He got banged in there somewhere. Got to get that shit taken care of. I think Harlan's in No, 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 he's got something. Sandstorm will be back. He will learn from this experience, and you can see how tough he is, shaking his head, and not even a mark on the face of the pit bull, Henry Williams, who indeed did pitch a shutout here tonight. And will earn his first win inside the mighty Trigon. The official decision is in, and here is Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, after going the distance inside the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center, all three judges are in complete agreement, turning in identical scores of 50 to 43. All in favor of the winner, by way of unanimous decision, the pit bull! Williams with those knockdowns, 50-43 on all three scorecards. The victor gets the beautiful medal from Scott Burke and gets to visit with Lupe. Henry, you took a very basic but very successful approach with this particular bout. Was the jab the key to this victory? The jab the key to everything, more than quite much ever. You got a corner with a tremendous amount of bare knuckle experience. How does that help you being in the gym every day with somebody like that? Great, got Julie Lane, uh, Ryan Reber pushing me daily. You're on the positive side of 500, your first Ooh, win in back. BYV. We back. How, how do you keep this winning streak going and how quickly you want to be back in here? I'm just, I'm just keep training hard and when they call me, I'm gonna take the fight. But hey, just keep going, follow your dream, they never stop ever. Hey, I lost twice. I did not stop. Look, look at me now. Look at me. I'm back. My reunion. Look at him now. Congratulations on the big win. Back to you guys. Congratulations to Henry Williams. Big smiles in the corner of Williams as he wins for the first time inside the Trigon. And he is right. After winning his first two bare knuckle fights in a combined time of two minutes and 21 seconds, he had a war with Manuel De La Torre. He he got stabbed by the samurai, basically, but he stayed with it, and he looked better than ever tonight, Pauly. Yeah, yeah, you got to know how to ride out those negative moments to, in order to really appreciate the positive moments. You know, if it wasn't for rainy days, we wouldn't appreciate sunny days, right, Goldie? And, and I think uh, tonight, Williams is really enjoying this victory after having gone through a couple of rough patches. He weathered a sandstorm. 
he sure did. He yep. sure did. And he pitched a shutout tonight. Yes, he did. And, and so thank you for teeing me up on that, partner. Coming up next, Spitfire is back. She made her debut in Dubai. Agnesa Kirikosian and Jessica Link fighting at 115 pounds for the first time in her professional career. It's a super flyweight matchup between Jessica Link and Agnesa Kirikosian when we come back to Rock Hill, South Carolina. This is BYB. Welcome back to South Carolina, BYB 21. Our tail of the tape for our next fight in the super flyweight division, Agnesa Kirikosian. She is 32 years old, two years younger than Jessica Link, who will have a four inch reach advantage, six inch height advantage. Link fighting at 115 pounds for the first time in her professional career. Spitfire looking to move to 2-0 inside the Trigon. Entering the arena, Jessica Lane. That BYB 13 fight you see on the graphic was on three weeks notice at 130 pounds against our champion, Monica Medina. Jessica Link, first time as I mentioned at 115. Paulie, she said she walks between 125 and 130. She told us she felt fast at 125. Now she will have the size, the reach, the angles, and the outside boxing if she wasn't depleted by the weight cut. Yeah, and she said she made the weight the right way. So yes. she said she didn't even expect to put on a lot of weight after the weigh-in because she actually lost real weight. So let's see if it's going to help her or if she lost too much of that muscle weight as well. You know, she could have distinct advantages at this weight with her height, reach, if she knows how to use them. But let's see how energized she is. She is a gamer, we know that. Her counterpart, Agnesa Kirikosia. Spitfire made her BYB debut in Dubai. Born in Armenia, moved to the United States at age nine, has spent a lot of time boxing with the gloves on, Glendale Community College. Professional boxing, she is six and one. Five of those wins, by knockout. Six of those seven bouts were in Mexico. 13 amateur fights. She has got an incredible skill set and she showcased it in a unanimous decision victory at BYB 16. There really was some sensational boxing that we witnessed in that show in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, she's got a high level boxing. Uh, you know, she has a distinct amateur career. I think uh, you could tell when she steps in there. She's throwing punches. The way she moves around, she's got enough experience, and she's got good experience. She's actually, you know, you see some people with experience, but they don't get better. You can tell Agnesa is, is one of those people who has the experience and has improved throughout with that experience because she there's a natural there's a naturalness if that's a word. Is that a word? Yeah, it is. There's a naturalness about her in everything she does inside the Trigon. Seven bouts in 15 months with the gloves on, including a boxing bout back in February. March was her win in BYB. Tonight, she looks to move to 2-0. Once again, with the official introductions, let's get it back up to Lupe. This contest... Five rounds or less, super flyweight division. This is BYB21, proudly presented to you by Buy, Sell Clothing, The Fight Doctors, and GC3. Our judges are Jason Collins, Barry Lindemann, and Troy Stamey. In charge of the Trigon, referee Sean Woods. Presenting first, the fighter in the blue corner, 
She enters wearing white with animal print trim. On the scale, she registered an official 115 and one quarter pounds in her fifth bare knuckle bout with a record of one victory against three losses. Hailing from Wichita, Kansas, Jessica Lynn. Standing across in the red corner, she enters wearing white with orange, blue, and red trim. She weighed in at an official 114 and three quarter pounds. Tonight, she enters the Trigon for the second time as a pro with a record of one victory. Fighting out of Los Angeles, California, Agnesa Spitfire Giracosia. Ladies, you know the rules. We've gone. I expect a clean fight. I expect you to obey my commands. Shut hands and go to your corners. Jessica Link, Agnesa Kirikosian, part of AJ Easley's team. She has been with AJ for three years. One of her training partners, Julio Tenori, who will fight for a belt in December. Here we go. White with some red. Orange in the white top, Karakosian, Jessica Link, the white and leopard trunks coming out in her conventional southpaw stance. And you can see already the, the reach of, of Jessica Link. She's she's trying to use it to her advantage, and she landed a couple of good good crosses there early in uh, in, the, in this round. Karakosian is a switch stance fighter, turns southpaw early against the southpaw, the long rangy Jessica Link. You link very tall at this weight, and she get that cross going. She's such from that southpaw stance. She could give problems to to Kirikosian. Six inch height oh. advantage. Kirikosian gets inside and lands. And that's another thing too. Kirikosian comes from boxing. Link comes from a little bit of MMA. So yes. on the inside, with Kirikosian being a little shorter, she can wind up in some of those tie plums from Link as well. And Link right there. in bare knuckle MMA and in BYB Stop. has faced our champion Monica Medina. Fox. Spitfire trying to get inside and do her work. Yeah, she got hit with a couple of those crosses. You can see her eye kind of blinking as uh, Kira Kosian. Jessica worked hard. She told us, as you mentioned earlier, Paulie, she did the weight cut properly. And if she can take advantage of her height, her reach, and still have that same speed and power, this could be a, a yeah. troublesome fight for Spitfire. Yeah, you see the swelling on Kirikosian's right eye. It, it's bothering her. She's blinking a little bit with it. Kirikosian's going to have to try to feint her way in and pick her spots, be in and out. It's hard to be in and out, though, with a, with a tall fighter. you got to more so use that head movement. you got to use a, a little bit of a different uh, style with that, a little bit of feints and sort of moving your head and to, to work your way inside. If you use in and out style against a tall fighter who's also rangy, it's much more ah! difficult. Round one in the books. Jessica Link looks good at 115. Yeah, yeah, good round for both girls. I think yeah, Link edged it out a little bit, but Kirkosian was able to land some decent shots at, at times. But again, I think she's going to have to use that style a little bit differently here. Yeah, in and out style against a total ranging fighter doesn't, doesn't help. I tell you, I, I, I had a lot of the same problems earlier in my career when I would fight taller fighters, and I, and I was able to sort of in, in, sort of start to use that little bit of extra head movement when I started training with Buddy McGuard a little bit. He was, he was very big on head movement, and it's something I took with from with me even when I left him. It was something that, you know, I realized can work on taller fighters, head movement and feints, as opposed to being in and out. In and out, if you're fast, works, but not against tall fighters, because right. they're going to find you on that in and out, and they're going to they're gonna, uh, find their range better. So let's see if Kira Kozin can make an adjustment. She can tell she's an in and out fighter. We saw her fight other times. You know, yes. She's a very good in and out fighter. No question. Against somebody this tall going in and out that way, you're going to have to use something a little bit different. Uh, if, if, instead of just that in and out. Let's see here if she had Justin right too. And A.J. Easley is a spectacular coach, so I'm sure that's exactly some of the advice that was given to Spitfire in the corner. White and Leopard for Link. White, red, and blue for Kirikosian. Agnesa looking to move to 2-0, and, oh, and she lands with the left there. And now she's just saying, you know what, I'm just going to back up. Link. Stop, stop. And Link right. got hit with a couple of good right. shots, and then decided, you know what, let me just tie it up and keep her back on the outside. 
Link with a sh some sharp left hands. That one missed, but again, she's she's throwing them sharply, so it's keeping Kira cozy and having to respect it. Julio Tenori marked the Shark Irwin December 2nd for the BYB Lightweight Championship. Isaac Puma Freeman, also a teammate of Agnesa Kirikosian, as is Jessica Smith. Good punch landed by Kirikosian. Kirikosian doubling up that right hand pretty well, and it's drawn some blood out of the nose of Jessica Link. Good hook there as well. Dirty boxing from both women. Yeah, this is not going to be as pretty of a of a boxing fight as Kira Kozin would like to have it. She's going to have to dig in a little bit, and she's doing just that here in round two. As, as now she's drawn blood from the nose. Stop. Of right. Named after the World Box. War II British fighter jet, due to her unpredictable and speedy movement by her former coach, the late Jessica, or pardon me, Jesse Lechuga. Spitfire and Link, round two. This one's scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Kirkosian's found some range in this round, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Link has uh, kind of gotten lazy with that with that lead jab, that lead hand. She's trying to use it now, but Kirkosian's been able to explode really, really well and using some good shots there. She has that shotgun jab that just closed that gap very nicely. Stop. Stop. Right, right. Back up. Box. And Link also is sort of hesitating now. She was, she was very, very uh, smooth as far as getting her punches off. Now Kirikosian landing some good shots in round two, having a good round, has caused Link to start to hesitate in terms of her ability to initiate and keep that distance. Very worthy of note as well. Keep an eye on the cardio of Jessica Link because weight cut, proper or not, still can deplete the gas tank. Yeah. It doesn't help when you're getting hit either. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> that siphons more right away, doesn't it? And you know, Kirikosian is a Spitfire, so she, you know, she's very energetic. She'll keep that pace. Unpredictable, quick. Playful at times, but very effective. Yeah, got Kirikosian blood on the neck of Kirikosian. I think that's from, from Link. But either way, somebody should be wiping that off. We've been on her neck since halfway through the previous round. Nobody wiped that off. Well, it's not on your suit tonight, at least. No, it's not. But still, I mean, when you go back to the corner, they <laughs> should be cleaning you off a little bit. Round number three, scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Kirikosian comes out orthodox to start this round three. Link right there, she did a good job of laying a couple of shots, but then she closed her own gap. I don't understand what Link did there. You know, Link was actually had Kirikosian on the end of some shots and then closed the gap and allowed Kirikosian inside. And now Kirikosian using this right hook pretty effectively. She's actually using these loopy punches pretty effectively here. From now the southpaw stance. Although she's cut herself now. Bare knuckle. Bare knuckle. knuckle. Everything's a cut, man. Everything's so you want to be a bare knuckle fighter. Speedy hands from Jessica Stop. Link. Break. It's a Break. good fight. Yeah. Again, I think Link has to really be cognizant of her range. You see right there, she uses it, and then she kind of gets in close. Again, Yessa turning her back. She's got to be careful there. Again, though, and Yessa is still Stop. trying to use that in-and-out style and it's sort of hurting her in, in, mo in some spots. You saw she's tried to get out in that in-and-out style, and she didn't know. She kind of caught a no-man's landing, and Link was able to catch her. I'm going to guess this is the tallest and longest opponent that Agnesa Kirikosian has fought. Box. Yep. I, man, I mean, for sure. I mean, Link, Link is at a weight class that's even low for her. Yeah. I mean, even she said it, she interesting cut. Stop, stop. I'll tell you, Link could have even more success. She actually closes her own Box. distance. You know, she lands some shots, and then she kind of smothers herself. I mean, she fought Pink Tyson at 135, fought Medina at 130. Mandiao at 125, right. Right. tonight at 115, Box. and that right eye is really battered. This is an early candidate to fight of the night, Goldie. Oh, absolutely. He's gone back and forth here. I was thinking the same thing. Stop, stop, break. Second spot. Round three, scheduled for five. Then oh. Link came back and took a round again. I mean, uh, I got a 2-1, Goldie. Two, 
You see there, you see Agnesa trying to suddenly get out. She tried to throw those shots and sort of smoothly like try to get out. And usually that works, but not against a tall fighter. Right. So she kind of ended up uh, on the end of some shots. But then Link herself, as you saw in that same replay, ends up closing her own gap. You know, I guess sometimes she herself is looking for the tie plum. But I think uh, she'd be better served to maintain at least a middle range, even when she's landing those punches and keep that consistency. Because Agnesa just has a tendency to go straight back anyway. Agnesa spent some time with her coach, A.J. Easley, in Las Vegas, sparring with top-level sparring partners. Jessica Link, her one professional MMA bout was against Frank Mir's daughter, Bella. Bella Mir, a winner by submission armbar in the first round over Jessica Link. Amir with a submission. What a shocker. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Mir's daughter's been doing this since she's oh. in the womb, I think. You know, she's so. amazing. They're going to call her Lady Mir or something? Yep, right? that's exactly right. right this fight of the night candidate continues. Karakosian was orthodox for about 2.1 seconds to start this round. And again, you saw Kir uh, Karakosian go straight back. And that doesn't hurt, doesn't help her cause. You see again, she, she's got to use that head movement and, and catch Link coming. She's trying to use those wide punches to close the distance, and Link's adjusting well, Pauly. Yeah, I think she's just now she's trying to just force her way in, but it's, it's it's wearing her out. This kind of fight is also wearing her out because what happens? Then you get inside, and this wrestling is something Link is more used to. Yes, than for sure. Closing. Oh, and again, get, gets called with a big left hand because she was backing straight up again. Jessica Link. Skill set looks oh. sharp here tonight. Break. Break. Back up. Back up. Link is a giant at this weight class. She, I mean, I don't know how much trouble she had at this weight, but she, I think she'd be apt to stay. We're at one minute, halfway through round oh. four. Break. Back up. Break. Five two-minute rounds. Super flyweight matchup. Link looking for her first win inside the Trigon. I guess in this kind of fighting, I mean, Link giving up her height like that on, at times, which to me is a mistake, is only a half mistake because at least she was a top plus. Good, good, good get back by Kirikosian here. Kirikosian looking to make it a scrap, and she fires quickly off the break. 30 seconds remains in round four. Link's kept up her pace, Paulie. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's been a heavier pace for Kirikosian because, again, she doesn't know how to relax on the inside the way Link would. Kirikosian. And I say that because Link knows how to use that tie plum and right. how to do that kind of fighting. We're going to go to the fifth and final round. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center, one more to go. This is the fifth and final round. This action from that fourth round. Left hand by, uh, by Link. Again, Agnesa was going straight back. She takes the left hand, then she finally circles around. But again, you can't use that in and out style against tall fighters. As she backs up, Link, Link looks right for the, the Muay Thai hold or whatever you want to call it, Thai plum. Thai plum, yep. Tie up, whatever you want to call it. But, <laughs> tie but, down. <laughs> Kira Zip tie. A, yeah, Kira Kozian had a, that, that quick moment there. But overall, I think Link is up 3-1 here uh, in the fifth, going into the fifth round. I think Kira is going to need a big round. And I think just in general, I don't know if she has that head movement enough you know, down pat enough to where she can really make Link pay for her height. Again, she's coming straight in, she walks into her left hand, she's trying to force her way in. See, they were got the desire, she got the heart. Yep, there's no question about that. Fifth and final round. Kirikosian coming out very aggressively. Back up, back up. Good flurry by Agnesa. And she's actually walking through punches now. She's trying to, but the, the thing is, Link again has that MMA background. She knows how to push her head down and nullify her when she gets close. Because Agnesa wants to just work her and work her and work her, but Link 
Link is preventing that. And when Kirikosian comes in, she's already making herself compact, which makes it even more seamless for Jessica Link to utilize that clinch, Paulie. But the energy-wise, it's been a good round for Kirikosian so far. And we still got some time. Let's see how she closes it out, but I think Kirikosian knows she has to at least win this round. I got her at least needed a knockdown, but at least she has, it could be closer. He's at least won this round, and she's doing a good job so far in this round. Big time. One minute. Now less on the clock. 45 seconds. Big shots landed by Spitfire. Stop, stop, Mike. Back up, back up. Back up. Back up. Both of you. Mike. Thirty seconds remain. This is a fight of the night so far, bro. No question. It'll be tough to top this one. The women always bring it. And good on Kira Cozy and really dig down this round. I mean, she realizes that it's not the technique that's going to do it for her. I don't think she mastered the technique that she needed in this fight, but she she went for it. And in the fifth round, she's got herself a good win in there in the fifth round. And it, it could have pulled out. I, I got to lose this, this fight three two, but if one of the other rounds are closer and the other they go the other way, she would win the fight three two. So. Let's see how the judges have it. This is a good competitive fight. They go the distance. Agnesa Kirikosian and Jessica Lake. Spectacular performance. Very aggressive in the fifth. Take a look at some of the action. Yeah, Nessa was trying to get in there any which way she could. You see uh, Link is trying to sort of push her neck down, which is allowed here on a nullifier on the inside. And Nessa, one thing she did work really well was that shotgun jab. She did it, it worked really well for her, and she it was able, the success Agnesa did have a lot of times started with that shotgun jab that pushed Link back. Well, the sacrifice is made by Jessica Link over multiple weeks to get down to 115 pounds may have very well paid off. This is a fight I would want to see again. So there's no question. You know what, they say close the fight strong, right? So I got a 3-2 link, but again, you just don't know if that last round was the one that could switch, right. flip it the other way, and if somebody had a 2-2 going into the last round. They say close it strong, or Kirikosian did that. She closed very strong. Smile on the face of her trainer, AJ Easley. And fights like that is why I got the barbershop smock on. Goal. That's exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. The decision is in. Here is Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, after five action-packed rounds, we go to the scorecards. Judges Collins and Lindemann scored about 48 to 47. And Judge Stamey scores about 49 to 46. All three in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Agnesa! win in 3-2, but again, it, it could have been one of those back and forth. 49-46, I don't really see how it could go either way yeah. for that one. That one's a bit wide for me, regardless of who you had winning. But I had a feeling that that last round could have come down to maybe with the winner, would we? Let's go to Lupe, right, Goldie? You got that right. You handled it perfectly, Paulie. Ag Agnesa, a very different bow from your debut in BYB. Walk me through that fight. Um, it was a tough fight. All props to Jessica Link. Um, we did, we did a good, I know, I don't know, we get it, we give it all in the ring. Um, I obviously, like, I always want to do, like, a perfect job. I don't want to ever get hit, but Jessica's tough, she did good. Um, um, I don't know, it was, it was tough. She had, like, length on me and everything. Um, it was good. I just want to can I thank everyone, I want to thank everyone back at home. Thank you for everyone who's been supporting me, watching me. 
I want to congratulate my brother and Pauline. He just got engaged. Um, I want to say hi to everyone in Armenia. Thank you guys for the support. Um, I love you guys. I just want to get back to the gym and get better. I want to be a perfect fighter. And I, I just want to do, I keep getting better and better. And yeah, thank you. Fantastic performance. We're really looking forward to see you back inside the Trigon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Jessica, if you could join me here for one second. An absolutely tremendous warrior. How did it feel being inside the Trigon for you? I like being in the Trigon. I like it more when I know I won. This is my fucking Trigon. This is mine. She did not beat me. This is mine. Do what you want. It's fine. You had a big weight cut. She was really putting on the pressure. Was that a factor in this bout at all? Not at all. I'm energetic. I'm strong. I'm not tired. I'm ready to go again. We think you guys delivered a fight of the night. Congratulations on the great performance. Back to you guys. Well, let's roll it back. Let's Goldie. do it again. I was just gonna, you know, I took the words out of my mouth. That's why, that's why we're good team. That's though, why we're powerful we're, partners. We're, we're thinking the same way. I was about to say, should we do it again? Let's do it again. Hopefully, let's do it again. Mel Valens way they can get those two back at the table and uh, get them to agree to a rematch, because that is one to see again. And uh, I think both girls have a, you know, and, and have an argument to say they think they won the fight. As it came out, Goldie, as it turned out, that last round was a decision, was a decision maker. Yes, yes. You just got to win two of the judges' scorecards anyway. So eliminating the 49-46 card, which was useless anyway, obviously that person didn't watch the fight. The 48-47 <laughs> fight scorecards could have been flipped with the final round. So always important to win that last round. Super middleweight matchup is coming up next. And don't forget our main event of the evening is for the BYB. Heavyweight World Championship, DJ Linderman and Rashad Coulter. But coming up next, it's Cisneros and Lopez. Saturday, December 2nd, the Trigon travels a mile high as BYB Extreme lands in Denver for the very first time. Three titles will be on the line, highlighted by the trilogy between Monica Medina and Patty Juarez. Mark DeShar Gerwin defends his BYP lightweight belt against Julio Tenori. Plus, Smash Nelson and Robert Cerna collide for the vacant BYB Super Middleweight Championship. For tickets and information, go to BYBExtreme.com. So, Paulie, on December 2nd in Denver, you've got Smash in his hometown. You've got Patty Juarez trying to get her belt back in her hometown. But, man, I am excited about 21-year-old Julio Tenori. You do a fighter interview with him. He's so soft-spoken. You're like, oh, man, this guy's in trouble. And when he gets in the Trigon, it's the other guy who's in trouble. But don't undersell Mark Irwin, dude. No, I'm you know not. I, mean? I'm like, not. I, I like that the was matchup. Next. That I'm was excited next. about the matchup. You know, T Tenori is an intense young firecracker, uh, good skills and explosive style. Irwin, very, very crafty, man. Yeah. And you know what? He knows how to make it, make your life miserable in there, as we saw uh, about a year ago with, uh, when, when he beat Oxendine right here in his hometown. It's, uh, it's a fight I'm looking forward to. And, of course, the title fight makes it all the more dramatic. It really does. And, and the fact is, is that Mark the Shark Irwin has been working diligently with Ian McCall and his team. A.J. Easley obviously has the spitfire, but he also has the young Julio Tenori. They're trying to start to sweep some of these divisions. Yeah, who well, himself is kind of a spitfire, right? Yeah. I mean, high energy style in Tenori, and that's what you get a lot of times when you get these young phenoms. Yeah. You know, they're skilled, but they're always very, very intense. It is indeed one we are looking forward to. Three belts on the line, December. 30 years ago, it was a December in which UFC 1 was contested at McNichols Arena. Tonight, though, it is the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center and our tail of the tape for our super middleweight matchup. Gregory Cisneros, the legacy of God, born in Venezuela, now lives in Chicago. He is set to take on Eric Lights Out Lupe, who is the shorter of the two opponents. Let's see if that height makes a difference. Making his ring walk, Eric Lopez. Club boxing, a ton 
of experience for Eric Lights Out Lopez. He is three and one in bare knuckle battles. He makes his BYB debut on just 10 days notice, replacing Charlotte, North Carolina's Ryan Jett. First fight for Lopez in 11 months and 23 days. Runs his own gym. Been boxing for nearly a decade. Had four surgeries on his left hand from an accident during his construction days. Thankfully, the medical profession is amazing, needless to say. He's able not only to utilize that hand perfectly on a daily basis, he's able to do something he loves as well. Yeah, that's not easy, man. <laughs> no. An injury like that, you can do construction and still fight. That and means they healed your hand good. Yeah, hands somebody up. who knows something about hands, my buddy Polly. Hands up, high defense, move your fucking head. His opponent, Gregory Cisneros. So Cisneros fought at BYB 19 in August against Rynell Riley, the Rhino, and he looked spectacular. But he hit a downed opponent multiple times and was disqualified. Thus, his record in the Trigon is 0-1. Now, with a very long MMA career, it's that muscle memory, Paulie. You, you've got to have the discipline, I know. Yeah. But as an opponent goes down, in it. MMA, you continue to throw. Otherwise, you get DQ'd if you do it here. Correct. Yeah, it was a fight he was winning easily. Uh, we called it, Goldie. And, and you know, hopefully today he, uh, he gets his, uh, if, he, if he winds up in the same situation, he's able to control himself. Yeah. Uh, since there was also, earlier this year, fought the winner of our first fight tonight in an, in an MMA fight, uh, Cub Hawkins. Yes, indeed. Who won that one? Cub uh, Hawkins. By submission. Yes. No submissions here, Goldie. Nope. Rear naked. A choke win for Cub Hawkins in Anthony Pettis' organization back in April. Our featured matchup, super middleweights, here is Lupe. We continue with the action inside the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center. This is BYB21, proudly presented to you by Buy, Sell Clothing. The Fight Doctors and GC3 this contest set for five rounds or less in the super middleweight division. Our judges are Jason Collins, Barry Linderman, and Troy Stamey. In charge of the action when the bell rings, referee Wayne Spinola. Presenting first, the fighter in the blue corner. He enters wearing black with gold trim. He weighed in officially at 167 pounds. Tonight, he enters the Trigon in his fifth bare knuckle match with a record of three victories against one lone defeat. Hailing from Dillon, Montana, Eric Lights Out Lopez. His opposition in the red corner. Wearing white with black, he weighed in at 163 and three quarter pounds tonight in his third bare knuckle match with a record of one victory against one defeat. Fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, and representing his homeland of Sucre, Venezuela, El Legado de Dios, Gregory Cisneros. Fighters. Okay, guys, we all the rules in the back. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves all the time. You want to now shake hands? Okay. Step back. I'll get you guys started in one minute. Wayne Spinola, our referee. Lopez and Cisneros, okay. who had his bare knuckle debut in Ecuador. Here we go. Eric Lopez in the black and gold trunks. His nickname lights out on the back of the trunks, black and white trunks for Venezuela's Gregory Cisneros. Big swing and a miss. Yeah, he's looking to throw it hard for punches, and that's what we saw. Oh, good shot there from another good left hand, good left hand. Big shot. 
Lopez. That might be it. Yeah, Lopez is not going to want to see it up here. It is all over! Just like that! I'll tell you what, Cisneros couldn't hit it when he was down there. He was way down. He switched his stance and absolutely delivered the definitive knockout of the night. Yeah. Oh, we just had a fight of the night. Now we may have a knockout of the night here. Let's see how the rest of the night. But the, the rest of the night has some competition for both yes, of those awards. Yes, indeed. He landed a right cross, switched up. You, you, you put that perfectly, Goldie. Landed a right cross, switched it up, and then landed the left cross even harder than he landed the right cross. Yes. And you heard it. It was on the other side of the trigon, and you heard the clap sound. And when that's, that fist connected with the Venezuela. fist, with that left cross, Woo. all the way to, to, to the other side of the trigon. We mentioned he looked great in his debut. Yeah, he couldn't hit this guy when he was down if he tried. He was no. flat out. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, we we'll probably get the whole fight on replay. Here's the right cross. Here's the right cross. Then it switches up here. And then here's a... Bam. <sighs> Dude. Oh, the night, and that's right under the eye, man. And who knows if, if his uh, orbit bone could be busted here. I don't know, man. We'll see when he gets up. But... That is a nice shot. See, he's composed, keeps that distance. And again, why it's important to keep that distance so you can leverage your punches. He didn't get too excited when he landed the cross. Came to his opponent and then, look, went to Lopez and he threw, the, that, threw that southpaw one-two from the proper distance to get the proper leverage on the major left hand. Spectacular knockout for the legacy of God. Our official decision is coming up next. The Venezuelan certainly wants that knockout of the night bonus. Right now, that is going to be very hard to beat. To make it official, Lupe. The official time, 26 seconds of the first round inside the mighty Trigon. Your winner, by way of KO, the legacy of God, Gregory Cisnero. Outstanding 26 second knockout for Cisneros. Twenty six seconds of the opening round, Gregoris. What was it that you saw that allowed you to finalize, finalize this bout so quickly? 26 seconds del primer episodio. ¿Qué viste en tu rival que te ayudó a finalizar este combate tan pronto? Primero que nada, gracias a Dios, es el que me trajo aquí. I'm ready. Estoy listo. 
Me preparo siempre para los mejores y para los grandes momentos. En mi rival pude ver la oportunidad de caer en mi juego en el tú a tú y fue lo que me ayudó en esta pelea con esa derecha de, perdón, de poder. First and foremost, let me thank God. He made everything possible inside this ring. I am ready. I came in here. I wanted to go blow for blow. It could have just easily been me that would have dropped in that particular round, but I'm ready for anything that's uh, still to come. Your, your ring name is the legacy of God, El Legado de Dios. How is it that you make that switch from being a man of God to becoming this absolute knockout machine inside of the ring? Tu apodo es El Legado de Dios. ¿Cómo presionas ese botoncito y te conviertes en una máquina de knockout dentro del ring? Bueno, como, como Dios manda, me puse ese apodo porque después de este momento, después de esta carrera, la bendición va para Dios. Tengo muchas premoniciones todo el tiempo y desde ahí me puse el legado de Dios. Dijo, es tu momento, hazlo y lo hice. Well, after this, uh, this career, there's a lot of work to be done on God's name. It, it was just something that came to me. It said, it's the legacy of God that needs to be your, your, uh, your legacy, your, your ring name. There's a lot of work to be done and all glory to God. Saliste sin ninguna lesión. ¿Qué sigue para ti? You came out pretty much clean without any injuries whatsoever. What's next for you? No estoy apurado. Pero si estoy listo para el mejor, el campeón, el, el que no es campeón, el que me pongan al frente, yo estoy listo. Estoy I'm ready. I'm in no hurry, but I'm ready for whoever they put in front of me. The champion, the guy who's not the champion, whoever it may be, I am ready. Felicidades, congratulations. Back to you guys. Well done by Cisneros. A 26 second finish for his first win inside the mighty Trigon. And that knockout of the night is going to be tough to beat. Facebook, YouTube, X, Instagram. BYB Extreme Fighting Series rolls on. Check us out every single day on social media. Coming up next, it is our co-main event of the evening. Our tale of the tape for this super lightweight matchup. Diamante against the Annihilator. This will be a fun one. Both are 35 years old. Significant reach and height advantage for Redick. Diamante coming off a tough night in the Trigon, looking to get back to his winning ways. Peter Zahel with Anthony Reddick fighting out of Birmingham, Alabama, and Carlos Guerra from Mexico City, training with Jeremiah Rodriguez. Takes his fight on less than three weeks' notice, but this is a guy who fought for us and then a week later went into a Muay Thai battle, so he is always in shape. Guerra schedules him two, three at a time. Yeah, he really does. Co-main event is set. Entering the arena, Carlos Guerra. Carlos Guerra, the Diamante. And you know what? When he started his bare knuckle career, he really was looking like a Diamante. Won four fights in a row to start out his bare knuckle career, but he's on a two-fight slide here. Of course, he's fought some good fighters. Scott McHugh uh, of BKB ended up beating him in a decision, and uh, Guerra was stopped by Seth Schaefer in a, in a, really in a fight where he was overwhelmed. But not, this is not an easy guy to overwhelm. That's what you were talking about with Goldie. It's a, it's a fighter who schedules two, three fights at a time at times. I don't know how he does it. I think he's crazy, because you could get cut, and especially in bare knuckle, you could wind up getting cut. But he, schedules, he fights in Muay Thai, and that's, that's mainly what he does. Does, but he does also fights in MMA and, of course, bare knuckle. But he tends to schedule a couple of fights at a time. As a matter of fact, he has a fight scheduled on November 18th in Las Vegas for a lion fight Muay Thai title bout. So, you know, this is uh, nothing new for him. Uh, he always expects, I guess, not to get cut. Uh, and tonight, you know, he's fighting a... He's got a seven-inch reach disadvantage. But a guy with the experience of Guerra, you know, I'm sure he's seen everything. And uh, we'll see how he handles this one tonight. Carlos Guerra makes his way to the Trigon right now, the three-time Mexican Muay Thai champion. 
of time we're fighting in bare knuckles. So no elbows, no knees. But Gara knows that. He's a, he's a veteran of six fights already in bare knuckles. His opposition, Anthony Reddy. Reddick, 35 years old, very tall to make 140 pounds. Been with his coach, Peter Zahel, since 2006. This song used to be such a big walkout song. I think I came out to it. I think even Tyson came out to it. Yeah. To the DMX uh, intro to the It's Hot and uh, Dark and Hell is Hot album way back in the late 90s. I've dated myself, but this was a big, big walkout song. <laughs> and Reddick bringing it back from the old school. And making it work for him. Diamante, one of the toughest competitors we have here at BYB. Four and one inside the Trigon, ready to go in our co-main event of the evening against 6-3. Anthony Reddick with the official introductions once again, Lupe. We continue with the action here inside the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center. This is BYB21, proudly presented to you by Buy Sell Clothing, The Fight Doctors, and GC3. This is our co-featured bout of the evening, set for five rounds or less in the super lightweight division. Scoring the action, Jason Collins, Barry Linderman, and Troy Stamey. In charge of the action once the bell rings, referee Sean Woods. Presenting first, the fighter in the blue corner. He enters wearing white with silver trim on the scale. He registered an official 141 pounds. In six bare knuckle matches, he maintains a record of four victories against two losses. Representing La Capital Azteca, Mexico City, Mexico, Carlos Diamante. His opposition in the red corner, wearing the multicolored trunks with black and gold trim. His official weight, 140 and one quarter pounds. Tonight, he enters the mighty Trigon in his fifth bare knuckle match with two victories against two losses. Rip in Birmingham, Alabama, the Annihilator, Anthony Reddy. Gentlemen, gentlemen, the center. You know the rules. I expect a clean fight. I expect you to obey my commands. Shake hands. Go to your corners. Carlos Guerra and Anthony Reddick. Fight scheduled for five three minute rounds. This is our co main event of the evening. Reddick with all kinds of colors on his trunks. Gara in the white trunks. They clinch early. You can see that right away, Gara started with the first jab with right to the body. Reddick also weirdly threw a jab to the body and put himself down all eight inches of his advantage. I don't mind that a taller guy goes to the body, but early on, yeah, I think you want to start to establish your range, especially against a guy who knows how to be as effective as Gara. You see the turn there. As Gara, it's very, very comfortable in there. Especially with the professional Muay Thai fights that he has been in. The MMA, Stop. the inside Stop. work, both men good in the clinch. The inside work. Why, why was there a warning for a holding behind the head there? 
I'm, I am not exactly sure. <laughs> Hopefully we don't see it again. Yep. Diamante really working the body of Reddick early. I mean, in real boxing, that's a warning. Yes. Yeah. Dirty boxing in the Trigon. Not so much. Not so much. Carlos defeated by Seth Schaefer at BYB 12 in London. Oh, a little counter uppercut there by Reddick. In a championship fight. Now Reddick with the dirty boxing, but. Gatta continues to go to the body, but the big cut. That counter uppercut did open up a cut on, on Gatta. Well-timed shot by Reddick. The problem for Gatta now, he can't fight November 18th, I don't think. That's exactly right. He's I always got something on the schedule. I always find this guy to be a lunatic. Schedule fights after bare knuckle fights. I mean, bare knuckle, you get cut so easily, it's crazy. Reddick, though, has to get to work, though. I mean, he's, he's got to open up a nice cut, but I, I think he's sort of just waiting and... and and posing too much. Geta is a guy who will make it uncomfortable and yes. keep pushing the action, pushing the issue. And very skilled. Good movement, good pressure. Mexican boxing style. Somebody lost something here, let's see. Uh, Gonna cut. check the cut. Hmm. Geta says, let's go. I feel, you, I feel like Geta's having a more effective round, but Reddick has been able to land some sharp shots. That's the thing about Bear Knuckle, man. I mean, the, the effectiveness doesn't really matter. I mean, Geta's confused here with getting warnings for getting for holding behind the head. I don't know. I'm confused too, Goldie. Yeah. And frequent ones. Quick hands by Reddick. They work in the clinch again. Reddick, I think, doing a good job there for preventing Geta from being effective on the inside. At least Reddick with those octopus arms, just wrap him up, and then that forces Geta back on the outside. Reddick went the distance with King Gio Gonzalez in his BYB debut back in February of this year. Yeah, Gonzalez got a good win there. Yes. Reddick hurt his hand early, but continued to battle. Geta taking this fight on short notice. I mean, I think Geta would have to take a page from Gonzalez's book. Yeah. Just get inside and work him. I think Reddick was very, very, very uncomfortable when Gonzalez was just forcing his way inside and just really wasn't, and he wasn't very scientific, but was just outworking Reddick, and Reddick just got very uncomfortable. Let's see this replay here. And then we may see here the, the counter uppercut. That was it right there. Oh, yeah. Well timed shot. And yeah. You saw it right away. You see the blood right away starting to stream off the the uh, scalp of, um, of Geta. We got that shit. No problem. Over 100 amateur fights. Reddick told us he used to fight two to three times a week. Eventually, he wanted to get paid. On his bare knuckle debut against King Gio, he said, My first fight, I was facing maybe the toughest 135 pounder in bare knuckle, no matter the organization. Gata's pretty tough as well. Carlos told us he knows how to fight taller guys. And if he didn't have confidence to get back to his winning ways, he would retire. He's got that warrior's heart. Anybody, any place, any time. Round number two, co-main event. Yeah, you can see what he's trying to do. He gets inside, tries to wrap up the head. Oh, good hook there by Geta. Tries to see, he tries to grab behind the neck of, of Reddick. Because Reddick's standing tall, and he makes it a lot more difficult for Geta by wrapping up those long arms around them. Smart tactics from, from Reddick. It's not super exciting, but what he's doing is he's eliminating the effectiveness of Geta, who wants to hold him behind the neck, but has to reach up so high that he can't bring his head back down. It was interesting. Reddick said he doesn't think his height is an advantage, nor a disadvantage in the Trigon. Certainly fights in a phone booth most of the time. Geta having a little bit of the same issues that uh, Agnese Karaposian had earlier tonight, which yes. is he's trying to fight stepping out against the uh, taller fighter. And if you try to fight stepping in and out against a taller fighter, you're going to find yourself having a hard time because the taller fighter is going to be more rangy when you go straight back. 
And Reddick, if you look at a blueprint, the performance by Henry Williams would be a good one to try to replicate by the Annihilator here in our co-main event. Stop! Break! Stop! Break! Box. Jeremiah Rodriguez, spectacular trainer, said sometimes Carlos gets caught up in a dogfight. Stop! Stop! He's seen a sports psychologist. Let's see if his attack stays aggressive, but responsibly aggressive as we reach about 60 seconds on the clock here in round number two. And that's the thing, to close the gap on a taller guy who knows how to kind of use his range in a boxing ring, you gotta be a little bit deceptive. And again, it comes down to that boxing experience that even guys like Guetta don't have. He's from Muay Thai, so he's trying to rush his way in, and look what happens when you rush your way in. You end up smothering yourself, and in, in, the, in the trigon where you can grab around, it ends up making him ineffective. I don't know why the referee keeps holding Guetta behind, warning Reddick for holding behind the head goal. Do you know I'm, uh, I'm allegedly puzzled, Paulie. Just when you think you know the rules, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. There is a and now, and significant now, size difference. And now difference. Reddick is not holding behind the head, but he's allowed to, because that's part of the, the, the Muay Thai holds. That Absolutely. To do. Now he's avoiding doing that, because he doesn't want to get, lose a point. A couple long punches by Reddick. Gata looking to close the distance. Turn the corner. Gata with that spin there. He, he did. Just didn't come back with no hooks. I don't understand what this ref is doing. Every time we come to South Carolina, I know. something with this ref I don't get, man. But he works every time. I don't know, dude. I don't know who's in the commission here. If they know the rules, I know we know the rules. Everywhere we go, we know the rules. This is the only place where this guy refs is where the rules come into question. They're ever evolving. For him, not for us. Exactly. Home main event. Still to come. The title fight at heavyweight, DJ Linderman looking to defend his belt for the first time against Rashad Daywalker Coulter. Very animated Peter Zahel. Gada is a warrior. We have seen that throughout his combat career. We've seen that in his five fights inside the Trigon. They're keeping an eye literally on the cut, though, that was opened up by the uppercut early in the fight on the face of Carlos Guada. Gada, again, trying to distance himself and then move in and work inside of the 6-3 frame of Anthony Reddick. A lot of work in the clinch. This is an exhausting style of fighting. Get a he is bloodied, but far from beaten. Now, nah, again, he, like we said earlier about Sandlin, he comes from Muay Thai. Yes, very so true. He's not going to take out the fighting spinner from him, no matter how much he's bleeding. And he's from Mexico City. Yeah. Uh-oh, Reddick is being overwhelmed here. Reddick is being overwhelmed here. Is he, I think he's quitting. I think he hurt his hand. Remember I mentioned he injured his hand yeah. in his yeah. debut, and it is all over. Carlos. Now he doesn't want to get it. Now the referee doesn't want to get it and jump on the ropes either. <laughs> he injured his hand against Gio Gonzalez. Looks like he hurt it again. And Diamante. Victorious 
in our co-main event. Yeah, big win for Diamante, come from behind. Yes. Let's see if we can see when the injury happened. I mean, he gets hit here. I don't, I'm trying to see something happens here. Oh, yeah. It, Maybe was it thumb? It, it might have been. And it, did he catch kind of the bone in the back? Yeah. Of the head of Geta, but he and he reacted immediately. Yeah, but again, it's not your lead hand, dude. You can box with your lead hand, with your back hand hurt. He didn't even want to try. I mean, I'm, maybe I'm being partial because I box a lot with only my lead hand. But, yes. But especially when you got that kind of height and you can use that jab, I mean, and, you, and you're probably ahead in the fight. Oof, man, that's tough, man. Reddick didn't even give himself a chance. He didn't even want to. Nope, he is done. Diamante is the victor. Credit to Guetta, though. He made it uncomfortable. He keep trying until he got until he got his men. So he comes back on short notice, weathers a big storm by the Annihilator, but is able to move his BYB record to five and one. The official decision from Rock Hill, South Carolina is coming up next. I still see him. inside the Trigon to make it official. Here is Lupe. Shit, Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center after consulting with the ringside physician, referee Sean Woods. Stops this contest with an official time of one minute, 19 seconds of round number three, declaring the winner by way of technical knockout, El Diamante, Carlos Guerra. Lupe with the victor. Carlos, tu rival tenía todas las ventajas, estatura, alcance. ¿Cómo superaste esos factores? Your opponent had all the advantages. He had height, he had reach. How were you able to overcome those factors? Yo creo que tuve un campamento de tres semanas. Agarré la pelea de último momento. Yo peleo con quien sea, sea alto, sea chaparro, sea de mi estatura, sea el campeón. Siempre soy listo para pelear. Y esto es consecuencia de mi apellido, Guerra. Siempre estoy aquí, gracias a Dios por permitirme estar aquí y a mis entrenadores y toda mi familia. Gracias. I'm always ready to fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. That's my last name. My last name is Guerra. It signifies war. Whoever they put in front of me, I'm ready to go. And what you see in my face, those are consequences of just the battle that we had. 
Obviamente tiene esa lesión necia que se sangró muchísimo. ¿Cómo te afectó en la pelea? You obviously have that cut on your forehead, uh, kind of a nasty cut. How big of a factor was that in the fight? Uh, en el segundo round empecé a dejar de ver. Solamente me llegué cuando recibía golpes pegaba y por mi esquina mi coach que me decía qué hacer y todo el trabajo que tengo atrás desde México. Pretty much from the second round on, I was kind of blind. I would just hit him when he would hit me, and that's all a factor. When I would hear the instructions from my coach, I would follow that, and that's uh, from the work I did back home. Saliste con una canción que se ha convertido en un himno para los peleadores mexicanos. Canelo la usó, tú lo usaste. ¿Qué significa para ti ser mexicano, ser peleador aquí en BYB? You came out with a song that has quickly become an anthem for a lot of Mexican fighters. Canelo came out with it. What does it mean to you to be a Mexican and to be a fighter here in BYB? Creo que esta bandera representa mucho el orgullo mexicano, donde va un mexicano siempre lo respetan, porque siempre nos vamos a respetar, porque damos una guerra y viva México, cabrones. This flag signifies a lot. Everywhere a Mexican goes, you know he's going to get respect because he's always going to deliver a war and long live Mexico. Felicidades, congratulations. Congratulations indeed to Diamante. Spectacular performance. He made it work and he got the victory. Joined by our founder, Dada 5000, Mike Goldberg, Paulie Molinaji. Dada, we're set for our main event of the evening. A heavyweight tilt. DJ Linderman. I said at the top of the show, Dada, he is reinvigorated after his win over Tony Lopez. He said he was going to retire like five, six years ago. Now he wants to hold the belt for five or six years. Definitely, you know, he found a new spark, you know, to motivate him to move forward. Every time I see the guy, he's looking better than he did the last time. And like he says, Dada, I'm supercharged. You know, um, this is my first defense after I won the title, you know, and I'm coming out here to show the people that I'm for real, I'm raw, I'm authentic, and I'm going to make a statement tonight against Rashad Culture. And he did make a statement, Paulie, against Tony Lopez. I tell you what, he made a statement against Josh Burns and Tony Lopez. Yeah. Really smart boxing. Um, really took the, took those guys apart in a way that you know was kind of high level IQ boxing. You know, uh, and tonight that's he's going to need some more of that. I think Coulter is a guy who has a, a lot of durability. He does not. He doesn't just go away when you put some shots on him like some guys tend to do here inside the Trigon. Uh, but you know. Losing those 10 pounds, that could help his, his conditioning a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and he is a gamer, but Rashad Coulter is a tremendous athlete. And that's not to say DJ does not have athleticism, but Rashad Coulter, high-level football player, may have made his way to the NFL if not for an injury, but he's been nothing but spectacular in our Trigon data. 100%, you know, the guy has a ton of experience. You know, like you said, you know, he's an athlete. You know, he's fought inside the UFC. He's played inside, you know what I'm saying, collegiate football, you know, and who knows where he would have been if he wouldn't have had that injury. But, like, he, too, you know, has a statement that he's looking to make to take that title away from DJ Lindemann. At the end of the day, gentlemen, he's going to put on a brawl tonight. Yes, and he says if it gets later in the fight, he will utilize his superior boxing skills. That is a quote from Rashad Coulter. All right. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. The champion, DJ Linderman, 40 years old. The challenger, Rashad Coulter, 41 years old. Rashad Coulter will have the reach advantage. You see 254. Linderman coming in lighter than Coulter. The winner will leave with that BYB heavyweight strap. Entering the arena, Rashad Coulter. MMA wins, Dada, eight by knockout. When we visited with him for the first time in Dubai, he just exudes martial arts so elegantly and reminds us all that while this is an intense combat sport, it is also one 
that is fought with men and women of respect. 100%, you know, this guy, you know, I spoke with him earlier, and even though he is coming inside here, you know, as the challenger, he also stated that, hey, listen, I got to build on too, you know, and it's a build called pride, and I'm going to leave with both of them, my pride and the BYB Heavyweight Championship of the world. Now, he is in Dallas, Texas now, but he was born in Newton, North Carolina during the fighter meeting, Tata. He quickly said, Goldie, don't kid yourself, this is still my city. 100%, you know, like, and I was right there, you know, and uh, he really feels that, and like he said, you know, he's not going to let his peoples down, he's not going to let his family down, he's going to be here to drop bombs in the mighty Trigon, and he's looking to walk away with that title in his hands raised, victorious. Paulie, what impresses you the most from Rashad Coulter? His, his ability to stay calm. He, yeah, the guy can't fight, but at, at the same time, if there's a storm that comes his way, his ability to kind of get through the storm and come back with his own storm after and really turn the fight around. He is the challenger, 2-0, Rashad, Day Walker, Coulter. His opposition making his ring walk. DJ Linderman. Fifty first professional combat competition tonight for the champion DJ Linderman. Began training in 2006. Had his first professional MMA bout in 2008. 41 professional MMA bouts, 2-0 in the Trigon at 40 years old. A guy who said he was going to retire at 35, I guess that's not the case, Todd. 100%, you know, I had an opportunity to speak with him earlier. He says, listen, this is my first defense in 11 months. Even though I won the title, I'm not a true champ until I successfully defend it. And that's what he's looking to do here tonight. That is the old adage, Paulie, that's been talked about a lot, is you, you win the belt, but you become the true champion when you defend it the first time. Oh, yeah, absolutely, because you're, not, you're going in as the defending champion, and to be able to continue to hold that off of hungry defense, off of hungry guys trying to take it from you, it establishes your, your supremacy. You know that your opponent is going to come when he wants to take that strap off your waist. 100%, you know, listen, when Rashad won his last fight, you know, he called out DJ Lindemann, and as the stars would have been aligned, you know, he got what he was uh, wishing for. You know, we're going to see if he can cash in on that, you know. It is time for our main event of the evening. With the new rules, scheduled for six three-minute rounds. Heavyweight belt on the line. Once again, here's Lupe. We continue with the action inside the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center. This is... BYB21, proudly presented by our sponsors, Buy Sell Clothing, The Fight Doctors, and GC3, our official scoring at ringside. Our judges are Jason Collins, Barry Lindemann, and Troy Stamey at the sound of the bell, the man in charge of the action referee, Wayne Spinola. Rock Hill, South Carolina, prepare to be entertained. The BYB main event starts now. Six rounds on the line. The BYB heavyweight title presenting first. The fighter in the blue corner. Tonight, he enters as a challenger. Wearing white with gold lettering, he weighed in officially at 259 and one half pounds. Tonight, this elite combat sports athlete enters as an undefeated bare knuckle fighter with two victories, fighting out of Dallas, Texas, and representing his hometown of Newton, North Carolina, Rashawn Day Walker Coulter. In the red corner, the defending champion, wearing white with black trim, he weighed in at 253 and three quarter pounds. Tonight, this battle-tested veteran enters in his 51st combat sports match with a bare knuckle record of two victories against one defeat. Tonight, defending his BYB heavyweight title from Wairika, California. 
DJ, the protege, Linderman. All right, guys, this is for the belt. I expect a good, clean fight. Listen to my commands at all time. Protect yourselves at all time. You want to now shake hands? Okay, John, we'll step back. I'll call you out in a second. Wayne Spinola, our referee. DJ Linderman, the champion. Rashad Coulter, the challenger. Okay, gentlemen, come to the Main event for the BYB Heavyweight World Championship. Here we go. Linderman with the red wraps. He is the southpaw. Rashad Daywalker, also in white trunks. White and gold for Rashad, white and black for DJ. Oh, big shot early, but a slip. The right hand landed actually for, for Coulter right there. I don't know if it was a counter by, by Lindemann, but a little bit of footing there. Lefty versus right, you gotta be careful here with the feet as well as the heads. 100%, you know, um, Coulter said, you know, yesterday at the fighter um, meeting, he said he's gonna let DJ walk right into his own demise. Yep. He did say that, and he did say, Paulie, that he is a slow starter. Yeah, Lindemann landed a decent left hand before, missed a few, but Coulter's gotta be careful going straight back like that against a southpaw. The corner of DJ Linderman right before Wayne Spinola got our championship fight started, said, DJ, fight your fight. You know, both of these guys got TNT inside both hands, and, yeah. um, you know, they're coming to make a statement. This is a fight that the fans is truly going to be the winners, regardless of the outcome. Uh, again, good connections made by Linderman. Good little angle change that he turned his lead right hand from a jab into a little short uppercut. Caught Coulter going straight back and then hit him with the follow-up lead, le lead left cross. He said, I am at the top of my game. Being in this historic chapter of bare knuckle boxing is an honor. And that same shot again, he, used, he figures it worked before, let him use it again. Yep. Uses that change of angle with that lead hand. Rashad opens up for the first time. And the came with a good right hand there, will end up in the clinch. Good tactical fighting between these two guys so far. And we did see a tactical fight in a breakdown of Tony Lopez by Linderman when he won the belt. A combination a second ago by Coulter. Finished with a good hook there to the head. And you know, even though we've seen, you know, um, DJ Linderman, you know, coming in better and better, he says, hey, listen, I want to get on to at least 235. Yeah. Motivated by the belt, motivated by his thirst for competition. Oh, big shot. Knocks down Coulter. Overhand shot. It is all over! Oh. Just like that! DJ Linderman defends his heavyweight belt! Wow! Watch it, baby! Watch it! I think he just stole the knockout of the knife from Cisneros. I think he did. <laughs> and you know what? You know what's interesting? The scientific setup behind that shot. He kept throwing the left hand straight. He got going left hand, left hand straight. Some landed, some didn't. He got Coulter into a, a, into a rhythm of going back on that straight left hand because he, he, get, he would get out of range of it. He would parry it. And then he changed the angle of it. He went from a straight one. Now all of a sudden he switches to an overhand shot. And Coulter really wasn't anticipating it. Remember, a lot of defense is anticipation. Coulter got used to seeing the Lindemann Lin Lin left hand coming straight. All of a sudden it comes around the side. Never saw it coming. And the shot you don't see coming is the one that hurts you. You're going to see it here. It's going to be a left hand from the south plus stance over the top. And there it is. It's coming loopy. You, he had been seeing that shot. You see, you see Coulter's right hand? He's looking to parry. You see what he does with the right hand? He's looking to parry his straight left hand because he's only been seeing the straight left hand. So he has his hand open. It's, watch, watch Coulter's right hand. He's got his palm open. He looks to parry the straight left hand. Watch. You see, he's looking to parry. He looks to parry and he misses it. And it, because the shot doesn't come straight this time, it comes up from the side. He throws it over it and Coulter ended up parrying nothing.
nothing and got hit with a clean overhand left that Coulter never saw coming. DJ Linderman's for real. He's got a title defense. He's a true champ, Dada. 100%. You know, I mean, listen, he came in. You know, he said what he was going to do. He delivered it, you know, and uh, he's earned a lot of people's respect tonight. 100%. All right. Dada 5000 will work his way to the Trigon to wrap the belt around the man who just defended his heavyweight title for the very first time, finishing Rashad Coulter quickly. The official decision, the belt presentation, is coming up next. Yep. DJ Linderman defends the BYB heavyweight belt with a spectacular finish of Rashad Coulter to make it official. Here in our main event of the evening, once again, we get it to Lupe. The official time inside the mighty Trigon, two minutes, 35 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of KO, still BYB heavyweight champion, the protege, DJ Landerman. First round knockout of Rashad Coulter for DJ Linderman. Here's Lupe. You know, champ, they say you don't become the real champion until you defend that belt. Do you feel like the real champion tonight? I'm the champ. I'm the champ, and I'm going to stay the champ. Ever since you got here, you said, the one thing I have is I have tremendous respect for the history of bare-knuckle boxing. Why is that so important to you? It's history, man. You go down in history, you'll always remember history. And that's why it's so important for this right now. I'm making a legacy right now, and I'm loving it. Obviously, you got the belt around your waist, but that also puts a big target on your back. You are the champ. What do you think is next for you? Whatever they throw at me, bring it. And obviously, you got three little girls waiting for you at home. What message do you have for them? I love all of you, Erica, Jayla, Mia. I love you girls. Ladies and gentlemen, still the champ, DJ Linderman. Big knockout by DJ Linderman. He defends the BYB Heavyweight World Championship. Back to wrap things up from Rock Hill when we come back. We done. Yep.
Saturday, December 2nd, the Trigon travels a mile high as BYB Extreme lands in Denver for the very first time. Three titles will be on the line, highlighted by the trilogy between Monica Medina and Patty Juarez. Mark the Shark Irwin defends his BYB lightweight belt against Julio Tenori. Plus, Smash Nelson and Robert Cerna collide for the vacant BYB Super Middleweight Championship. For tickets and information, go to BYBExtreme.com. Started with a night in which Cub Hawkins continued to add to his tremendous performances inside the Trigon. The proud Hawaiian with a great victory, Henry Williams, looked spectacular. It was a solid seven fights in the Trigon tonight. Entertainment Bobby. personified. That's what the mighty Trigon gives you. Every single fight is always exciting. Even if, when the ones that go to distance, I mean, yeah. watching Link and Kira Kozian really box each other in a violent, such a violent way. I mean, that's what it's all about in the, tri in the Trigon. You get big knockouts like we saw in the main yep. event. I mean, it's just action top to bottom, excitement top to bottom. You got to keep tuning into BYB. You do indeed. And so let's take a look first at our knockout of the night. And we just saw it and it is awarded to D.J. Linderman. Cisneros had it yes. until D.J. <laughs> took it away. Cisneros had it all night. It looked like it was going to Cisneros, but at the buzzer, at the buzzer, <laughs> D.J. Linderman, Cold Cox, yes. Rashad Coulter. What a shot, and uh, really smart presence of mind for Linderman to switch up the angle of that left hand he was throwing. It really made all the difference. And you know, it was interesting too when you talk about the boxing and the weathering the early storm, it was an early storm, and then Rashad did see that, okay, he was coming to hit me hard, and he did. And he ends up with the knockout of the night, and he also defends his title. Fight of the night, undoubtedly, the five-rounder between Spitfire and Link, Agnesa Kirikosian and Jessica Link. What a battle. Such amazing momentum switches in that fight. I mean, it started out with Link, it went back to Kirikosian, back to Link, back to Kirikosian. Ultimately, Kirikosian got the decision, but often, it's just one of those fights that you want to see a rematch. That's one of those fights where we're going to be talking to Mike Vasquez, we're going to be talking to Dada 5000 and say, let's get that done because th these two girls deserve to make the money and deserve to get that rematch. That was entertainment. That's what we talk about when we talk about the Mighty Trigon. There's no question about it. And Jessica Link working so diligently to get to 115 pounds, it was worth it. Oh, absolutely. She is a giant at that weight class. And understanding her range, she was making yes, life hell for, for Kira Kozian, who likes to get inside and use those sharp combinations she has. But when you control range like that, it eliminates the ability to use those combinations because you got to be able to close range to throw a good combination. And Link's, light, Link's length really made that a problem for Kira Kozian. Kira Kozian had a fight with her heart more so than the tactics. It was a great fight for that reason. It really was in uh, Magic Man, my powerful partner, an entertaining night always with you. So much fun to watch this sport continue to evolve. Absolutely, and we'll, we'll continue to grow here yeah. at BYB. Can bring you more fights. December 2nd, Colorado? December 2nd, Colorado. We'll see, we'll see you guys there, tune in. Not one, not two, but three titles on the line in the trilogy between Patty Juarez and Monica Medina. The battles inside the Trigon, tremendous again tonight here in Rock Hill. Henry Williams, Agnesa Kirikosian, they all put on a show. Williams was tremendous, without a doubt. This, as we showed you, was our fight of the night. Cisneros switches stance, bam! Lopez down and done. And then 
Carlos Gata. Back to his winning ways, and DJ Linderman defends the BYB heavyweight belt. For my powerful partner, the former two-time world champion, the Magic Man, Paulie Malinaji, Mike Goldberg saying so long until next time. We see you right back here, inside the Trigon.